everyone, and welcome to the Scratch Kiss Academy. We are back today with some werewolfy goodness. Um, so before we head around the table and say hello to all these lovely faces that you see here, um, I'm going to ramble about a few things. First of all, please check out um, the content warning for this game. The link will come up in chat. Um, and also the other links that will be coming up in chat. The next season is upon us. If you would like to get into a game, whether it's a viewer game or whatever, please head over to Twitter and drop Scrat a DM. We are currently sorting next season. It's not stressful at all, but we're in all the best ways. Um, also, if you've missed out on anything and would like to catch up, please head over to YouTube. You can find all of our games put into playlists um, over there so that they're easy for you to view. Um, also, we do have a Discord. Please feel free to join. Um, we also have um, a channel just for this game, and we would love to hear what you think. Um, also, I want to say a huge, huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors um, in the form of Maycham Press. Um, that includes um, their Dark Matter, which you can now buy in hardback. It's basically D&D um, &D in space, and it works with um, all the standard races and things as well. So you can literally pick up your D&D &D group and yeet them into space. Um, so please go check that out. You can also check out um, our, their Fae Folio that we run every Wednesday. Um, we also have the Deck of Many with the Deck of Many Things. Um, they're moving magic spell cards, which you can see here. They're very, very snazzy. They're very, very groovy. Their Kickstarter has been blown out of the water. They've got some amazing stuff, including art books and my favorite, the moving tarot cards, which I now want to use in all of my games. Um, also, the wonderful Hero Forge, if you want to see how their beta is going, Scrat and I, every Wednesday tomorrow at 2pm EDT, we drink a lot of coffee and play around making minis um, and also using all of their new colours and textures and there's some amazing stuff over there. Um, also, the wonderful Dungeon Fog, if it's um, for a one-shot or whether it's for a campaign, um, they do all of your map making needs. Um, they keep your notes together as well as the map. And the great thing is if you change something on the map, it automatically updates it um, in your notes as well, which is really fab. Um, and also our newest sponsor, uh, which is very, very fitting for Pride Month, is Heartbeat Dice. Um, they do some seriously uh, good Pride Dice. It's also the first uh, dice that I've seen that have demisexual dice, which I love, I love, I love, I love. Um, they also have a Kickstarter. There's some beautiful things coming out at the moment, so please go and check them out. Otherwise, let's head round and say hello to all of these lovely faces around here. Um, and we'll start with the lovely Lee Sparks. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. I don't know why I'm always so surprised still. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh gosh, it's me. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Lily Sparks. I'm the girl with many lives. You can catch me streaming a lot, but slightly less than usual now. Uh, but yeah, you can follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch at Lily Sparks with an X. And I'm super excited to be back with my werewolf girls. It's been a while. So thanks for being here and excited for a good game. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and then we're going to hop around and say hello to Shelby. Oh, hi. Hi, I'm Shelby. Uh, you can find me basically just on Twitter at Shelby is a nerd. I do have a Twitch that um, is, you know, kind of active. So if you want to follow me there too, you can. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, and then we're going to hop around and say hello to TJ. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, everybody. Uh, my name is TJ Rotel. Uh, you can find me Wednesday nights on Fractured Roll. Uh, beyond that, uh, yeah, just really excited to Excited to be here at T-J-R-O-T-E-L-L -L, across the internet. And uh, yeah, love RPGs and making content. Awesome, thank you. Um, I'm Alice or White Rabbit Pick on Twitter. That is where you can find me most of the time. Um, I'm also a DM for Aether's Walkway over on Tales from the Grim, where I get to play with Lily again. Yay! And I also uh, um, am one of the DMs over on Gilding Light, like Lily again. Um, so yes, um, please go check out those uh, fab places as well. I'm also a photographer. Um, you can check out some of my stuff in the links that are coming up in chat. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, hand straight over to our lovely Alpha. Oh, hi, Kaya. Well, oh, welcome, everybody. As I say every week, except for that one week, but we're not going to talk about that one week because I forgot it. <laughs> because I am Never. a terrible werewolf. I am Kaya Gass, and I am your alpha for this evening. You can find me on the Twitter and Instagram spheres at Charisma. I'm not super, super active on social media, mainly for my own mental health, but 
I do post every once in a while. And when I do, it's usually about people being dicks and how we shouldn't be and pictures of my dog. Um, <laughs> Uh, In the Light of the Moon is a tweaked monster of the week powered by the Apocalypse game uh, where uh, werewolves are not monstrous but blessed divine creatures given a gift to bring a balance to the world to stop evil from getting through the veil. And when it does get in the veil, it kicks its ass. Um, last week, we had um, Reese and Pan joined uh, by two visitors, Arlo and Rosalind. Um, to, to deliver a, a message of sorts, as Arlo had had a vision of a ritual happening in a, an abandoned town where a great evil was being pulled through as a uh, kind of a call to action, um, Arlo being our, our demon uh, monstrous, <laughs> and a very lovely, essentially target shopping episode happened um, where we all just... <laughs> kind of just, you know, I think we all just needed that. Mm-hmm. And it was utter chaos. And my abs are still hurting from the laughter after two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, but we left off with Reese and Pan, uh, I believe, in the library as Amanata was disclosing uh, the lore of the impious. Um, so take it away, my wolves. Is there any conversations that you would like to have? I believe Pan had started making tea. Pan had started making tea. I think she was sat in the library and pulling out a flask and making tea and just sort of listening here and there. And she was getting not not tense mm-hmm. a little bit, which is why she's making tea. It was like, so how do we kill it? How, like, she's like, I know we need to get the things, but we need to do it now because this is sounding, you know, certain it's not sounding good and it sounds like it's not getting any better and it's probably the first time you've heard her not she's not panicked but she's just talking faster probably than she normally does are you talking to me she's kind of addressing the whole table like Armanada's there because Armanada is quite calm really hmm. um and she's she, old just, she yeah it's just shit. um <laughs> old it's it's more pan pan isn't looking at anyone she's just like frantically pouring tea she's probably made more than there are people at the table i feel like the table is filled with tea like in animal crossing where you can't put stuff down enough so you just spill up the entire <laughs> just table. like it's one table of dropped packages because your pockets are full mm-hmm. let me stress poor tea <laughs> are arlo and rosalind still with us uh they, they... They kind of gave their uh, gave their info and kind of bid adieu before they were pulled into too much. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Arlo uh, kind of tries to like surreptitiously like slide something um, like into like the pocket of like one of your jackets. Uh, do I see an- him do that? <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no, knowing no. Arlo, you probably do. They're not a very subtle demon. Um, and Did you just it's... put something in my pocket? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. Shh, t- I'll talk to you later. And he like walks very briskly <laughs> out the door. <laughs> and you feel in your pockets and you feel a, a piece of paper. Um, and you pull it out. It's the back of one of Amanada's books like he had ripped out one of the pages (laughs) i immediately am like oh yes (laughs) he's in so much trouble (laughs) and uh you pull it out and it says uh dear reese okay so like hi um (laughs) writing an actual letter is very awkward but i think you're very cute and i i think we have things in common I know uh, you're going to be dealing with demons a lot, and even I can't be there because I may go nutso or something. I'm cheering you on. I'm hoping y'all beat the bad guys, because I bet you can. And hey, it's no big deal, but once we can meet face-to-face again, like, no big deal. Would you like to, like, go on a date? Maybe try dating? I'm not sure how it works, and I'm not asking Rosie for help on this. Here, here's my Here's my number to call. Or, or my email. I could also use magic to maybe touch base. Okay, I'm ending the letter now. You're you're very cool. Uh, demonically yours, Arlo England, the next Hellboy. 
and then the next Hellboy is scribbled out. <laughs> Demonically oh. yours. <laughs> Demonically yours. <laughs> my god. Oh my it. god. So I feel like Reese is just like reading this letter and like looks up and like Pan is still making tea and like looks down again and like the letter is in front of her face and her hair is like covering the sides but it's like anime style like just going bright red like from the bottom (laughs) up to the top and then I just like yeah I just like fold it up and I just put it back in my pocket and I'm like if Reese is red, like, I don't feel Reese goes red too often. No. Um, I'm trying to hide behind, like, my hair and everything, though. I think Pan looks up from a cup of tea and, like, you know, it's filling up and it's getting f- far too close to the edge because she's looking at you. He's like, you okay? Uh-huh. You look a bit flushed. Is it too hot in here? No. Nope. No. It's It's a normal temperature. I, um, you know, it's just when you were talking about killing the the demon, I was like, yeah, we have to kill the demon. And then I just got so angry that I held my breath for a bit and now my face is red. So huh? yeah, nothing, nothing unusual happened. So how do we kill the demon, Aminata? <laughs> <laughs> and Pam pushes that this now far too full cup of like tea, which is like it's balancing on the edge towards you. It's like, um, if you drink hot tea, it actually normally cools down your body temperature, so you should, oh, good. Sort of, you know, calm down in a bit as well. I like slide it over towards myself and do the thing where I just kind of like lean down and I go, <laughs> <laughs> just in the quiet library, like. <laughs> One of these. <laughs> Reese is trying to explain away the blush is literally me when I'm trying to explain why my face is red when I've been crying when I don't want people to know I've been crying. It's You're crying. Not, I was I'd running. give you tea as well. <laughs> I, don't, I just it's humid. <laughs> it's humid. So I'm not how do we kill this demon? I mean, you know, demons are cool. Some demons are cool. Some demons are cooler than others. Like I, I Arlo was fine. What? How do we kill the demon? <laughs> I sip my tea inside, I <laughs> But continue. <laughs> Aminata first kind of goes, isn't that... And she just kind of is like, remembers that she was young once. <laughs> and tries to breathe away the fact that Arlo had destructed one of her books. Mm-hmm. And just mm-hmm. kind of goes... Well, um... That's going to help you as she gestures towards uh, the sword that you had, um, the half sword that you had uh, retrieved at one point. Our our Shira replica half sword um, gifted to us by the moon. Um, she's like, but for this, from what Harla was saying, so obviously Marius is trying to amass forces. And it seems like he's recruited a few members of the Impious. They're priests that have essentially been corrupted with the promise of wealth and power. They're just, they've been slowly growing in numbers over the centuries. We really don't know how many there are now or how many there have been. Uh, There were members of the clergy of many different sects. Um, The thing that they have in common is their desire for power and their sense of self-righteousness. The same self-righteousness that led to the belief that they were special chosen of their God and that only they were worthy. This led to whispers the voice in the shadows that kind of fed their ego and their madness told them that they needed to cleanse their, their parish and that for each corrupted, they purified, they would be rewarded riches, power, longevity of life. Each impious purified their congregation with each death. Their soul became more and more corrupt, but the whispers kept their promise. Their lives were stretched to extreme lengths but it's, it takes tolls on their bodies and it's kind of how you can identify one of them. Their skin has yellowed as are their eyes. 
Um, their teeth have rot to match that kind of corruption that's filled their soul. But they are fast, wicked, and hungry to purify the next being in service to the corruption. Uh, I don't, they're, I assume from what Arlo was saying is that they're trying to perform a witch role to bring in more followers of sorts. Um, from what he was describing, I, I think I know where they're trying to do this. Uh, there's up in the mountains, as is everything in this place. So everything's up in the mountains. Um, there's like an abandoned mining town. It's been desolate for decades. Um, I know that there was a terrible thing that happened there with the greed that through the cold gold rush with the the greed and the corruption that was there it fell and it's kind of like a hotbed for corruption now i can only imagine that based off the ritual arlo was describing that that's where they're trying to open a rift my concern is what are they trying to bring through the rift marius marius is already here He's been here. He just kind of pops around. Something bigger, maybe. I can all, I would imagine. What's worse than Marius? Oh, there's, Marius, don't get me wrong, is the poster boy for the corruption right now. He's the, he's the leader. But every leader needs a tank. Moab, a bomb. I can only imagine that's what they're trying to pull through. If anything, just forces, masses. So we should stop them. Ideally, yes, it would be beneficial, mm -hmm. absolutely, mm -hmm. to stop, if stop the ritual, or at least kill whatever comes through if we can't get there in time. Um, she kind of like good at killing things. She is. Yes, you are. She kind of <laughs> chuckles a little to herself. I mm -hmm. think you're gonna need some help, though. Mm -hmm. Is Arlo coming back? No, no. He said he's not gonna be here. Never mind. Don't worry about it. Um, help mm -hmm. from other people, not Arlo. No, Arlo has nothing to do with it. What? Pam drinks her tea and now eyes are just constantly on Riesling. Aminata will also understand. reach over <laughs> to her tea and she'll just mm -hmm. pick up my tea. <laughs> We're all this, tea, this mug, it's a library <laughs> mug. It says, don't grow up, it's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> my sister keeps wondering when I'm going to grow up and I keep telling her never. Mm -hmm. I have bills. That's about as grown as I feel I need to be. Mm -hmm. Um, Arlo, I'm sure will will be around. I don't care. Absolutely, of course. I don't know why you keep bringing him up. So, so he's <laughs> gonna help us. And she just kind of like looks over at Pan, like what Pan is, is actually very oblivious to things. If anything, Pan's <laughs> like, what kind of fever is this? <laughs> Trying to work out as a doctor what it could be. <laughs> it's love fever. It's love fever. It crushes is, in the air. Which no, is not. not on Pan's radar. So she's like, <laughs> that's fair. Um, <laughs> Arlo going along on this journey would definitely be unwise. I don't as much of a wonderful person he probably is. He's okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he would be able to ignore or halt the call mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. his demonic side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it's okay. We can, we can get someone else to help us. So. 
Why are you all looking at me? <laughs> no, 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 stop pouring more tea into the cup. Well, I know a guy. A being. I think they would be... They're really good at burning out corruptions. Mm-hmm. I'll be right back. And Amanada steps away and kind of walks over to a landline. It's a rotary phone, oh, because I like rotary phones, and it's a red rotary phone. Because oh, every... my parents still have one of those. <laughs> I, I grew up with that phone. <laughs> Listen, I wish the only reason I want a landline is so I can have a rotary phone. And that's... I, I grew up with a rotary phone. <laughs> so did I. No, absolutely, so did I. We had a tan one. Yeah. We had yeah. a black and a red one. <laughs> it was green. I shit you not. It was that horrible lime green. <laughs> I loved it. Um, goes over to a bright red, you know, like those stereotypical, you know, calls the president on the red phone, picks it up and dials, um, and dials you, Dante. Hello? Dante. Samanata. Samanata. Always a pleasure. What can I do for you? I, uh, we need your help. No. Oh. Could you do your special skills? Oh, that kind of help. Could never just be painting a fence, can it? Well, you know, if you didn't burn the fences before you painted them, perhaps I would call you for painting a fence. Oh, and you're right, you're right. Where do you need this help, Amano? How quick can you get to Silver Hollow? Quick enough. Got me in. Got any uh, allies you can bring with you? Oh, I have a friend I think might enjoy the ride. How, um, can you be here tonight? Yeah, I think so. Let me confirm with her and uh, I think we can get that done. All right. Anything I need to know before I step into this? A corruption's back. Well. I guess I'll see you soon. See you soon. She hangs up. Reese is like, I don't know what Pan is doing, but Reese is like under the table, like looking at the note again, like probably has her head like super <laughs> bent over so nobody sees it. And then I, I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm doing that. I call it the aunt thing. You know, when you're sat there with like a mug of tea, like, like, you know, and they hold it awkwardly as they try to look at mm-hmm. what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. I'm doing that. I look like a cool aunt, is how I describe <laughs> it, in my ugly jumper and everything as well. Mm-hmm. Um, sort of look at it like, what, what, what's that? <laughs> what's what? Well, you're reading. Just one of Amanada's books, a page from Amanada's book, and it's I'll hold up like the it's back like- of the is you tore a page out of Amanada's book? <laughs> yes. You can't let her see that. And she tries to take it off you to stuff it in her oh. pocket and hide it. Because <laughs> 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 she doesn't want you in trouble. <laughs> and Reese, being the werewolf that she is, when Pan goes to take the note, she just like shoves the whole paper it's in her mouth. mouth. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> And then she realizes that the phone number and email are on it, and then she just like, no, she's like, no you're gonna have to chew it and swallow it if you don't want it to find it. Oh my god! <laughs> I'll just put it in my pocket, I'll, and I like smooth it out again, and I just fold it up and put it back. Okay, well, every week I'm just like, what is this game? <laughs> what even well, is this? Why did you do that? Do what? Tear the page out of the book. Because you know that British expression you always use about taking a leaf out of someone's book. And I didn't hear you say that to me recently, but I thought I would try it. And you see Pan, I I really need to explain my metaphors before (laughs) um, I actually... Okay, okay, well, that's not exactly what I meant, but maybe we'll try something different next time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Just don't let us see that. 
<laughs> and she sort will of never <laughs> straightens <laughs> up now planning to hide the paper as well uh dante is there any conversation that you and v would like to um have before leaving uh yeah definitely would want to catch her up on uh what's going on uh what the corruption is um i, I basically just want to say hey the v um you want to go on a road trip i mean not really but i don't really have a choice do i well i mean you always have a choice i mean I, I it might be fun if you're into demons and corruption in colorado <clears throat> are you gonna sing that song about the bottles again yeah i don't care how many bottles I mean, are on the wall okay i mean it's it's a class it's a timeless class uh, you're yeah, kids well pack your bag um, we're gonna go meet a friend of mine and help her out with a bit of a corruption problem yeah sure whatever <laughs> all right <laughs> Dante will start packing his bags. Perfect. I really want that as an In the Light of the Moon Corruption Demons Colorado. Super <laughs> <laughs> hollow. Um, so you Twice pack right. your bags and get ready to depart. We yeah. don't it's we don't know where you are in the world. It's fine. You'll get there tonight. Yeah, I'm close <laughs> enough. Sorry, it's we'll be good. Yeah, cleaning up an issue somewhere in northern Utah. Sure. Yeah. Everything goes wrong in Utah. Yeah. So, um, lots of woods. Lots of woods. <laughs> lots of salt. Yeah. Um, is there anything... Uh, you have a couple of hours before Dante and V arrive. Uh, Reese and Pan, is there any last minute things that you would like to do before allies arrive? Are they meeting us at the library? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Then I will stay here. <laughs> Reese will look up YouTube videos about how to fight with a sword. Because okay. she has literally never done that before. Okay. I would like to discover YouTube videos <laughs> whilst Reese is doing that, please. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I feel like Pan does that thing where she looks at how to videos and then it's slowly you know in like the the auto plays on and you slowly get into the um old vine video <laughs> clips that's where she ends up and you you're trying to figure out what this vine video compilation is trying to teach you <laughs> yeah kind of like she starts off you know how to like what my nan does my nan fixes cars by going on youtube so i feel like that's what pan would do the equivalent um you know how to do this how to do that or she'll watch things mm -hmm. on how to bandage something be going that's wrong like as she is probably sure. critiquing a lot of the medical ones <laughs> yeah i feel like this happened like reese started watching youtube videos on her phone and then pan was like what's that and so like reese gave her like an ipad or something <laughs> like how you give kids just like the technology she's like okay just sit Keep here <laughs> yeah. Yeah. is it um, in like one of those like really cute like teddy bear like rubber <laughs> covers um, I Reese don't think it? so because I feel like, yeah, this is Reese's iPad, so it's probably not even in a case and it's probably cracked, cracked. and broken. <laughs> uh, stickers on the back. <laughs> like Just, anarchy stickers. Yeah. <laughs> Weed sticker right in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, and Reese probably, we'll, we'll say that it's all like Apple connected because during the time as well, it would probably also be hilarious if Reese was like watching YouTube videos, looks up, sees Pan watching YouTube videos, and then like sends a text to Arlo that's just like, hey, but then the notification pops up on both <laughs> the, the iPad, iPad and the <laughs> yeah. iPhone. Every now and then Pan's just... <laughs> <laughs> up and back down again, but won't say anything. <laughs> Oh, pants but yes, I would like to browse YouTube, please. <laughs> browse YouTube. <laughs> yes. What is the first video you would like to browse on YouTube? Um, I think she'll start off with like how to fix certain things. Like she's broken her cupboards um, at home when she was tearing stuff apart. Um, okay. So I think she starts at that and then wonders... Um, uh, it probably sees a load of adverts on how to like how to do um you know how to bandage a wound or you know if this happens how to get rid of a splinter or just like the really small things and i think she probably goes through them and you probably hear her under her breath like wrong wrong 
wrong. Ah, don't do that. Like, and it's like you're just like talking to herself as she goes and, through them, and then finally vines. And very slowly, you make your way to those videos of those people who are using ramen to fill in holes on their chairs and hide money in like random things. And you're trying to figure out such a waste why of it's ramen. necessary. Don't get me started. Because <laughs> IRL Alice will go off on one as fans. So. <laughs> Um, Reese, you look up videos on how to use a sword. Um, uh, some of them... <laughs> I was like, wait a second, that's a, that's a C-stand. Um, <laughs> the light stand, sorry, my apologies. Uh, and um, uh, Aminata kind of like peeks over your shoulder and sees, sees you and um, goes, well, if you want to know how to use a sword, I could teach you. You're like old. <laughs> this is a uh, sword guy nine eight two. He's got like three million subscribers. No offense, Aminata, but I just want to learn from you know an expert. My life's on the line here. Look at this sword. <laughs> and with that, she kind of reaches behind her and pulls out. Um, a, a sword of her own. Uh, she pulls out like a. Um, okay, she pulls out a kukri, because I know swords. Um, she pulls out a kukri, and starts just really like, like with precision, just swinging it around, and then grabs it by the end, and then throws it perfectly, and it lands on one of the bookshelves. But sure, you keep watching your sword guy whatever's and so again, kind of goes, to plug and she goes cracks her back and just walks away <laughs> call me mumbling on her butt breath call me old she, i was an alpha before she was even born to call me old i was in molly's oh. walking away mumbling i'll just yeah. go and take her sword <laughs> <laughs> you go you go and you take her kookery <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> How old is Aminata? I know how old she looks. Uh, Aminata looks she... in her mid to late sixties. In reality, she's pushing two hundred. Okay. Oh. She could have had like five million subscribers. Watch it. But... Watch it. That's half my age. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she was. I believe in her forties when and is... Aminata is from. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Aminata is from Mali. She has a French accent, but because I refuse to insult an entire population with whatever horribleness <laughs> would come out of my mouth that might be French, I just use my voice and I forget to describe every week. Aminata is uh, about 5'6". She is from Mali. Her hair um, is uh, dreaded and grayed. Um, she wears traditional garb and has a very thick French accent, and she is badass. But I forget to describe her every week when I talk about her. You are muted, my love. I can see your lips moving. And has no YouTube subscribers. That was and has no real. YouTube jump in, but... <laughs> but she's not like grandma. She knows how to use a computer. She runs a damn library for heaven's not sake. Not Pan. Oh, Pan. <laughs> God. I didn't know what YouTube was. <laughs> I have, yeah. The, you, the YouTubes. Hey, can you look up <gasps> on the YouTubes machine? Yes. I am that person who is. I would like to look up on the YouTube, please. <laughs> my mom still calls the internet AOL, so. <laughs> yep. My mom still has an AOL. <laughs> yep, mine too. <laughs> my dad types like this. <laughs> and it's very painful. And I love wow. them both. And they ask me to fix their internet all, all the, the time. time. All the time. And I send them my bills for tech support. <laughs> Speaking of parents, if we're in the library as well, Reese will make an effort to seek out her mom's. And, okay. you know, I feel like it's one of those, like, they're working and then Reese just kind of, like, lurks up behind them. And it's just like, hey. They I don't react, you. like, at all because they have been used to your um, your scent of strange for a very long time. They mm -hmm. birthed you. So this mm -hmm. is, and so uh you find your mom restocking books in the children's section. They are of course not in the library portion that you are in that is the um secret 
everybody knows about it, but it's the secret part. Um, and your dad is uh, currently other your other mom. My apologies, I forgot. Your other mom is um, re-hooking up some computers in the computer lab. Um, so which one are you walking up to? The one stocking books or the one fixing the computers? Both of them in turn, just because Reese has started making an effort to tell them that she loves them. So she'll just lurk up behind them and like whisper it in their ear and then run away. Got it. Um, so you before lurk- deadly, deadly mission. <laughs> you, you lurk behind um, your mom who's restocking the books. Um, and without even turning, just stocks one and goes, hi, my love. Hi. You doing okay? Uh-huh. I love you. Bye. I love you too, too, too. Already got. Yep. And she kind of just chuckles to herself and continues back and just takes a moment because her child said, I love you, which is huge. My nieces said they loved me this past weekend after I told them to do chores and I feel pretty happy. So, um, and you find your other mom, uh, she is underneath a desk as she's, uh, rewiring together, um, computers in the computer lab. Oh, perfect. She can't even see me. I'll like, loom, see I'll loom over the desk and then just be like, hey, I love you. Bye. I love you, too. And you hear her like try to get up quickly to like say hi to you and pow right into the top of the desk. Ah, love you. Already got safe. Shit. Ow. OK. And then like realize that hitting her head on the desk has actually fixed one of the computers and goes, huh. That's one way of doing it, and goes back to our work. <laughs> Perfect. Anything else? All right. Uh, Dante and V, you hop a plane that just happened to be boarding when you got there to make it super, super quick and super awesome and super efficient, because this is my game. And uh, you uh, land rent a car and get to um, Silver Hollow probably a little after dusk. Dante, you've uh, definitely been here before. You know where you're going. Amanada's in the library. Welcome to the library, V. I'm going to go meet my friend Amanada. Does she Try like... not to steal anything. Are the books flammable? Very, very flammable. Mm. So please... Please try not to agitate me too she much. She has like this oversized like black hoodie on with like the unipocket in the front. And she just sticks her hands way down in the unipocket and just kind of puts her heads down. She's like, okay, let's go. But maybe, I don't know, maybe not spend a lot of time here. As little as possible. Okay. Amanada, we're here. Well, I could feel the heat on the back of my neck when you walked in the door. <laughs> How are you doing, Dante? Fine. It's good to see you again. Good to see you. Thank you both for coming. Hi, uh, I'm Amanada, and she extends your, her hand to UV. Yeah, her hands are just going to stay in her unipocket. Um, unipocket? Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm V. Nice to meet you. She kind of just changed her hand into a... Cool. <laughs> um, Progress. Yeah. I. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> let me introduce you to a couple of the members of the pack. And <laughs> she'll she'll bring you back and and uh, you you see sitting at a table, uh, Pan not sitting We're at not a table. Sitting at a table. <laughs> What? Where are you? <laughs> where are you? <laughs> What's going on? What did I miss? You you describe it. <laughs> oh my gosh. So you see, the table has been pushed to the side. I don't know where Almanada was. She wasn't watching us. Um, and Reese has like the sword like level at Pan uh, and is kind of just like moving towards her and like trying to spin it the way that Almanada did earlier. And then she pulls out like the Bukri and like tries to like double sword it around uh, while Pan. Uh, Pan has found the mop from the um, the um, cleaning cover because there is no other sword. So she's kind of got the um, the mop out and is very much like, ha ha, like it's gone, it's gone into full um, 
like Pan genuinely thinks like they're proper training, but she is probably enjoying it a little bit too much. I love that you said that there's no other sword, and I'm literally <laughs> just holding both the swords <laughs> while you defend yourself. Well, you're them. you're using them. <laughs> like, uh, so she's just like, yeah. Dante smirks and looks at Amanat and says, "This the is your new is pack, huh?" The world is doomed. <laughs> For reference, Reese is like six foot five. I, she's all super tall. Uh, picture Slender Man as an Asian girl. She just has like long dark hair that falls over her face. She's super pale, tall, and skinny, and very creepy. And Pan is five foot three. Um, oh, okay. V is very... small and creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Pan is five foot three very much in an ugly jumper that looks like it's been knitted in a pair of jeans and very heavy boots um sleep she up. looks like alice she looks like yeah alice. <laughs> <laughs> See, if yeah. anybody if anybody every week i'm going to remind everyone who might be new when alice sent me her pinterest board for pan i literally messaged back so you it had tea and crochet I didn't knit tops. Know this. okay i, I didn't know this <laughs> And it was jam and toast and heavy jumping. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. The life I want to live. <laughs> Let me live. I can't argue with jam and toast. I can't either. All day. Yep. Um, uh, Amanada yeah. will kind of gesture towards both of them and go, These are my best. Wonderful. Uh, yeah, Dante's uh, uh, about six foot. Uh, he's got a little scruffy five o'clock shadow, a little faux hawk in the front. He's wearing like a, like a leather jacket. It looks like he probably could have just stepped off of like a like a fast bike or something he's a very brooding and, and handsome of course have to be if you're a hellhound yes yeah, absolutely have to be requirement hot <laughs> <laughs> thank you everyone i will be here all week you should have known when i said oh book him that you're in store for for the rest of the game and v what does v look like uh v is probably like like five one like very small her her giant sweater sweatshirt sweater hoodie looks like a dress on her and she's got like like kind of like like a bob hair like a bob white hair and like these piercing uh gray eyes and she basically just kind of has like her head down hands in the pocket is she's a shuffler when she walks you a know shuffler. pick her feet <laughs> yeah <laughs> hears that all the time <laughs> yep <laughs> and then she shuffles louder Valid. Teenage Rebellion. Mm -hmm. Shuffling, shuffling, shuffling. It's Every day she's shuffling. Uh, well, so uh, what have we got here? Some uh, some weapons training. Huh? Oh, yes. Like we mop over the shoulder. <clears throat> yeah, I put that. both swords over my shoulder and I go, ow. <laughs> I hold it off to the side like this. <laughs> Hi. A little stream of blood. And mm -hmm. then it goes back into the wound and it seals up. Mm -hmm. Oh, now, um, do you have like, uh, are you wolves all the time? Or are you do you have human forms as well? Yeah, you, we're well, in you a are human, human form right now, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, um, would would Dante be aware that these are, are wolves as well? Like, yes, he, you you have enough. You If you're saying that you were immortal and you've been yeah. around the block, you know 100% who uh, uh, who they are. You might have had a run in with Pan, but that's not super important. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what are we up against here? I Do put the know? sword down on the table. <laughs> Both of them. I I, I, hold, I keep hold of the mop. <laughs> she just stands there. I love I, that there's a machete in your bag. I know. <laughs> <laughs> there's, we both there's have a machete. legit machete about this long yep. in your bag. And you're like, mm. nah. Mop. Mop. Well, my bag is all the way over there. <laughs> the mop was only there, so... Makes for easy cleanup after the fight. Yep. Mm -hmm. There's just, like, chunks missing out of this mop. I'm taking the mop, just so I you're aware. I was really, <laughs> really <laughs> hoping that you would take the mop. Mm -hmm. um, goes well with my anorak. But the, yeah, I think me. Pan, like, looks to him and say, demons. Bad oh. demons. Like, looks over at Reese. It's like, not good demons. The bad ones. Yeah. Fair. Good demons? I don't know any good demons. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just smiles. We have the to go and... <laughs> We have to go and stop a ritual 
because this bad guy Marius is going to like open some kind of portal and like pull something really big through that we don't want to fight later. So we have to fight now. Um, does Dante, does, being as old as he is, does Dante know anything about Marius? Um, let's see. Yes, you would know Marius. Uh, you know a little bit. You know you had a little run-in with Marius a couple of centuries ago. Um, you're probably a little befuddled to hear that he is a demon, as when you knew him, he was one of the divine. Um, Marius. Well, that is troubling. You know, Why would Marius want to be bringing demons into this plane. It's kind of what he does. It's what he is. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. He's spreading the corruption, like, everywhere. Like, we went to Florida, we went to Arizona, you know, next thing we're gonna go somewhere crazy, like Canada or something, I don't know. (laughs) There's a lot of corruption. (laughs) You're gonna say that Canada is crazier than the Everglades? (laughs) Well, Teresa is, because it's a whole other country she's never been to. Yeah. Um, Pan's just like shuddering at the idea of getting on another plane. <laughs> so. Oh my god. Oh. Why, did you know Mar- Marius? You seem like you know him. Their life, yes. But he was more like you. Than you. I look at Pam's mop pants mop that she's holding and i'm like uh-huh like us yeah for sure yeah <laughs> it's just like exactly like us <laughs> one of us well regardless of who he used to be i guess what he is now is really bad so we have to go and stab him with that sword understood i brought okay, one of so- my own He'll pull out a big long sword from his sheath in his back. Nice. We are all trained swords people. (laughs) You just see like V like standing behind Dante, like holding this knife. Mm. Like her head's down. She's just like smiling. Everyone branding a blade apart from Pan. I feel like that's very apropos though. Calm down, Mm. everyone. (laughs) Like um, (laughs) But yeah, we kinda need to go to somewhere up in the mountains. Banded mining town. Yeah, and stop him bringing through whatever he's trying to bring through. Hmm. Are you up for this? Oh, you need a bigger knife. I have this one, and I pick up the bukri. The, the kukri? The kukri, sorry. What did I You're say? Good. What is a bukri? <laughs> I was like, I'm like, how, was... how big is it? A kukri is um, from the end of the hilt to the tip of the blade about this big and it kind of uh it's it's an egyptian style sword where you hold it and it kind of goes like this Mm. how big is a one big knife a one big knife yeah have you ever seen crocodile dundee (laughs) yeah (laughs) when he goes that's not a knife and he pulls out a knife that's (sighs) that's a big knife she'll just look at her knife she's like i think i'm good but thanks and just sheath it Hands back in her unit pocket. Until say, where did you get that knife? Where- Don't worry about Lifted it. Lifted it from the one of the hunting supply stores on the way up. <laughs> did you just put that knife in your pocket? <laughs> I said she sheathed it. Puts her hand in her pocket. <laughs> Stuffs it in. Point first. Dude, that seems like a race move. <laughs> <laughs> just excuse me. <laughs> well, we're going to have to have talk about your shoplifting after this. We, we can't get on the radar with the cops again. We'll just leave town like we just did. They'll never find us. <sighs> okay. Bigger fish. So, how do we get Is to this, this town? <laughs> no. Do we look anything alike? No. No, no. Not that I wouldn't be proud, but no. Certainly not. Oh. Uh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'll give you some tips on shoplifting later. <laughs> Amanada just goes, okay. I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear that. Yeah, that makes two of us. Dante is going to, is there still tea all over the table? There's oh. tea everywhere. Is this tea for anyone or? 
Oh, help yourself. <laughs> oh, that, thank you. I'm a, I'm a fan. Please tell me you warm it up yourself. Is there oh, anyone? Yeah. As soon as he as soon as okay. he pick he picks it up from under the cup and you just see steam start to come off the top of it. And he super drinks it super hot. Like he's he's a walking fireball. So <clears throat> just over here like some like it hot. Yeah. <laughs> super hot. Super oh, hot. My fireball. husband has ruined me with puns. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I help. Big fan. You do help. <laughs> um I'll sit down across from Dante and take some tea and say, so we're going to head up into the mountains to that mining town. We have two smaller people with us. I motion to <laughs> Ben and B. Um, you seats. can fight, I guess. Yeah, I can fight. Me too. All right. Dante, so you say, I can fight. You can see Amanada kind of push back one of, like, the racks of books just in case <laughs> you decided to do something crazy and she didn't want her books to be affected. Yeah, I would mm. say he he looks up from his tea when he says, I can fight, and you see his eyes just burn, like fire red, just like a bomb went off in them, and he kind of smirks a little bit and says, I can fight. Mm-hmm, 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 <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. 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 We're making it way cooler than Team Wolf did. Just saying. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm with that. a lot of inspiration from Team Wolf, though. Shout out <laughs> Listen, to Team Wolf. where do you think I got all of this? I, I was it. so happy when you said that. When I was like, I'm watching a lot of Team Wolf. Is it okay mm-hmm. if we play? And you're like, Hellhound is like, yes. <laughs> Super fun. We'll have a conversation later about stuff. Oh yeah, we're gonna. Um, cool. Were there any last minute preparations before you hopped in a vehicle and drove three hours, pick a direction towards this uh, abandoned mining town? I think Pan will pick up all of her um, usual stuff, like her satchel with medical supplies in, snacks, drinks, machetes. Um, she's probably got like her coat and stuff wrapped up in it. But that's about how it. many bottles of Purell have we brought on this trip? Do you mean five? Like, yeah, I was gonna say. Do you mean just Pan or Pan and Reese collectively? <laughs> <laughs> Ever since the beginning, Purell has made it into every session. So, how much Purell do we have? I <laughs> think five bottles. Five's a good think... number. We have a dark sense of humor. Burns anything off his skin if he doesn't feel mm-hmm. it deserves to be there. Mm-hmm. 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 Purell will be good for that. Yes. It's very flammable, as mm-hmm. we have learned. Yes. <laughs> and now, um, I know you have a big knife. Was there anything else that you feel you would like to ask for that I will give to you? Because I am a gracious DM that is more than happy to gift you weapons. Um, I feel like she's okay with her knife. Okay. Um, question. Are there any spirits around? Um. In the werewolf library? There might be. <laughs> so I would say basically name. like when they're just, if, if, if she finds anybody interesting, you know, she'll just be off kind of t- looking like she's talking to nobody. Um, as everyone else is preparing. She's like, yeah, kind of like, I don't really need to prepare anything. I'm good to go. So you have, well, you have Hex, the site. No. Yeah. You have Hex, the site and Jinx. Jinx. Um, um, yes. This is an old town. Silver Hollow's been around for a couple hundred years, and not everybody who has served the library has been um, a wolf with a uh, a long life. Um, so you see a couple of uh, humans kind of uh, roaming the halls, just um, as if they're in their own type of routine, stacking books that are incorporeal in nature and just kind of going about their business. They see you and kind of nod. Okay, well then she wouldn't interrupt them. She's, you know, polite with the spirits. Gotcha. Um, We'll say also with the site, you see not necessarily, you see kind of like a scar Something that's not a wound any longer, something that's been uh, healed and cauterized. Mm -hmm. As if kind of like vines across the wall, you see where there was once kind of like a corruption that has been burned away and it kind of leaves a a, a scar across it um, that uh, that you see kind of all around you. 
and you saw it entering into the town as well. Um, but outside of that, no, uh, no other spirits to aid you in, in this manner. Just, just some friendly human ghosts going about their business. Okay. Tight. They wave to you. Y'all just see um, the wave at something that you cannot see. Mm-hmm. And talk to things that mm-hmm. we can't see. Yeah. That's yeah, Reese really is hard. like, whatever. Seen it all. smiles a little. He gets it. He's seen her do this before. <laughs> Get it. I've been there. Um, while like, oh, Pan... She's making friends. <laughs> Was that Reese? Uh, while Pan is packing up, I feel like Reese will be like hovering over her. And as she hands her the Purell to put into the bag, she'll just say, Remember when Jay used to pack us pancakes for our trips? And I think Pan probably freezes for a moment, just stops it. Uh huh. And sort of pulls out this small tin and sort of shakes it a little bit. He's like, Flapjack's okay. I don't know what that means. Are they different? And she opens it, and there's like this OT sort of like little square cake in it. It's like, I can't, I'm not great at making pancakes. You are a pancake. So that's I okay. Am. I'm excited to eat this. And she'll like pick it up by like two fingers and be like, yes, so excited to eat this. <laughs> put it back. <laughs> I miss Jay though. She sort of slowly nods. It's like, me too. So let's go kill this thing so it wasn't done in vain. Yes. And she stuffs a flapjack in her mouth and closes the tin and puts it in a bag. <laughs> Kai Gaston killing all of Re- uh, Pan's friends. Since. Again. <laughs> Here I go killing again. Yeah. You and your <laughs> Reese. And you're just- <laughs> Here <laughs> like, I go killing again. <laughs> oh. I've been saying that for the past two weeks. For I made the meme. Is that because I made yep. the meme? <laughs> and so I'll do something, and now my husband says it to me because I told him the story. <laughs> and I'll go and I drop something, and he just goes, "There she goes, killing again." <laughs> so thanks for all that. Right. So you all finish your packing, load up into a vehicle. We'll say that Lucy, Lucy being the the mechanic of the town, and also the mechanic of the town, um, uh, suits you guys up with a a pretty nicely stocked. Um, I call it the A Team van. Did anybody ever watch A Team? Did anybody see the movie with Liam Neeson? Because that van was also amazing. <laughs> And inside of it, there like are a couple of weapons, a couple more machetes, uh, a couple of shotguns, um, uh, some tear gas. Because why not? There's, I think there's some like tear gas in there or some. This is illegal. This should never be used on anyone. <laughs> yeah, they're really old. They look like they got like salvaged from the war. And she probably just goes, "It's more for decoration. I really wouldn't use those. Um, it's more for aesthetic." And uh, I think she also, remembering the first encounter, kind of just puts a, there's like a bottle of Purell in there as well. Um, so you all uh, load up. Uh, Aminata has supplied you with the coordinates of uh, the whereabouts of the town. And uh, you all start uh, heading off in that direction. And I think because I have a feeling things are going to be a little intense after we get there because I designed everything. We're going to go on a break! Um, and I know perfectly well how to do this, but I screw it up every week because it's a lot of fun. Um, kiss your dogs, take a bio, have some water, take a breather. We're going to be back in about five to ten minutes. Don't go anywhere. Things are about to get corrupty. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> See you in a second. <laughs> Ah! Oh no, Jimmy! Hecna's after us! What are we gonna do? Eh? Sword beats face! Ha! Looks like you really lost your edge, huh?
I'm funny. So, I guess weapons don't... Weapons don't work! Hey, why aren't you laughing? Oh, I know. Let me hit you with the punchline! Ah! Wait, my animated spell cards! They can save us! Well, jeepers, Jane. Blast them! Avada Kedavra! <laughs> Right in the funny bowl. I really don't like that guy. We did it! Yeah! Defeat your greatest foes with the most powerful spells. Animated spells are back with level 6 to 9. Each spell card features 8 frames of looping animation that makes the spell come to life and contains all the spell details on the back. And for the first time, you can divine with a fully animated tarot card deck. Will you read Fortune or Folly? Jane! Techno's reforming! Not on my watch! Meteor Swarm! Uh... Go to animatedspells.com and back the Kickstarter today.
Well, welcome back, everybody, or welcome back. Um, I hope you booped some snoots, uh, got some water, took a breather, but didn't go too far because we're doing stuff. God, I'm really bad at words. You've really wanted me to run a game? This is terrible. <laughs> That's why I write things down. Too late, you've been doing it. I've been you're, doing you're it. You're literally like at the months. penultimate. You're literally at the penultimate episode. I know. Never this was not better. the audition. <laughs> Did I fail the audition? They didn't cancel me yet. Uh, anyways, all right. So we're uh, we're in the the A team van. I can't remember what it was called. I can't. Lucy, what did what did Brackus call it? I can't remember. It's oh, no. Um, let me know in the chat if you know, <laughs> but, uh, it, racking up in the van to go, uh, about three hours, uh, in one direction into the mountains, um, cause everything takes place in the mountain. As you're going, uh, up the steep inclines, the weather goes from kind of that fall crisp air to now you're starting to see, um, more snow and more flurries, um, as you get to a, a part of the road where you understand that you're probably going to have to walk a little bit. Um, Aminata has given you the GPS coordinates on a little thingamajig, a Garmin, one of those things, um, that kind of tells you uh, kind of where, where you're going. And you know you're on the right path because uh, even through the snow, you can kind of see the slick tar of of a land that has been long corrupted and not many people have set foot on it um the uh town itself is an old abandoned mining town from a time long past uh the the town stands as a monument to greed with its dilapidated shoots mills and shops all in service to a pursuit of fortune and power in the center of the town, as you all start to uh, come up on it, um, you can barely make out in the distance, almost as if you're looking down one large main street. Almost makes you almost reminiscent of Silver Hollow and looking down main street and seeing the library and Jay's diner and the school in the distance. Um, you see a, a chapel. What was once possibly a beacon of good, and godliness now lies in partial ruins. The steeple that once held aloft the cross has long since collapsed, leaning inverted against one of the three remaining walls, kind of like a drunken sailor against the bar. The front half of the ceiling has caved in and uh, leaving the insides exposed to the elements. The whole town just smells of rot and damp wood and of that ichor that um, you, Pan, and you, Reese, have, have become accustomed to with dealing with these entities. Uh, as you're walking towards it, the snow kind of crunches between, be, beneath your feet and sticks to the soles of your shoes. Except for probably you, Dante, as your, your heated core melts with every step, leaving behind you little puddles. Um, from the distance, you can see, um, as the sun has now set and the the town itself is illuminated only by the moon and this warm glow that's emanating from inside the chapel. And from the corners of your eyes, you see almost behind the buildings, part of the walls that have fallen down, you see through the windows these glowing eyes that just are tracking you as you walk following your approach do they smell like anything they, they scent they definitely smell a lot like those um corrupted animals that you dealt with at the cave when you got the she-ra sword mm -hmm. <clears throat> I turn back to the group, just like, not like a full turn, just very subtle, and just say, um, we're being followed by some corrupted animals. I dealt with them before when I got a She-Ra sword. This sword. By the power of Grayskull! 
<laughs> I think Pan's nose twitches so that she can try really smell maybe from which direction. Yes, being followed, but like, is there a particular direction and like how close? I think this is a great time for investigative mystery. Yeah. Or read about situation. Both are applicable. What well, do I have to roll for that again? I can mm. never remember. Can uh, I do one and I do one? They're, yeah, so one can investigate a mystery and one can read about a situation. They are both the same role. I believe it's sharp. That's just it, because um, I'm actually good at that. <laughs> like, I know you are. Twelve. Actually, let someone else do it, because I just realized I don't have any dice near me. You want me to roll for you? Here. Sure. I have one now. Seven plus whatever your sharp is. I have a plus two sharp. So a nine. Oh, wait, sorry. A plus zero sharp. <laughs> That's so <seven>. very different. <laughs> a seven, yes. Um, so you do... That is a success. All right. So we'll start with Pan on your 12. Um, you may ask any of these two questions at any time. What happened here? What sort of creature is it? What can it do? What can hurt it? Where did it go? What was it going to do? Or what is being concealed here? You did ask a question as to you're wanting to see how many there were. Is that what you're asking? Uh, like how close? As in like, um, so if we know they're following us, mm -hmm. is it really close from a certain direction sort of thing? Or because those are always narrow, so I always go with whatever mm -hmm. questions you have. Um, they are they're they're keeping their distance a little bit from you. Mm. Um, you get the sense that um, maybe one or two of these were some of the ones that were at the battle where Reese got the sword, mm. <laughs> um, and are kind of giving you a wide berth. They're not attacking at the moment. They're kind of waiting to see what you're doing. Um, the, the road itself that you're walking down, if you choose to walk down this road, I'm not mm -hmm. forcing a narrative on you, um, is it's not extremely wide. I wouldn't say it's like the old Western ones where it's like a four lane highway wide. It's, it's pretty, it's, it's narrow. So the, it almost feels a little closed in with the buildings. Um, and you can see that they're kind of stalking behind some of the buildings and you're only catching them either in the alleyways in between the buildings or in some of the dilapidated ones where the the back of the building has fallen you can see them through the the broken glass um but they're keeping about a like a 50 or 60 foot berth from you both from you all um and they're from what you can see uh there's four sets of eyes that you can see okay and so, Reese, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just say, so kind of surrounded, like as in like they're at all angles, they're not closing in, but they are all around. They are all around. Yeah. Okay. They haven't quite closed the gap behind you, but you get the sense that, in, especially in predatory packing. Um, they're like making a perimeter, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Coordination? Mm-hmm. that the word mm -hmm. I'm looking for? Sure, we'll go with that. Mm -hmm. First for me. Yep. And then Reese, uh, read a bad situation. What's my best way in? What's my best way out? Are there any dangers we haven't noticed? What's the biggest threat? What's most vulnerable to me? And what's the best way to protect the victims? Let's do... Or a different question if you have one. Dangers that haven't been noticed, because we have noticed one danger, but usually there is another one lurking nearby. I don't know what you're talking about. That's not... I, I'm not predictable like that. Leave me alone. <laughs> I just more men like GMs in general. <laughs> That's fair. There's always a mimic Stories. in the closet. Yeah, that is there's the always closet. something. Being cooled out. <laughs> uh, so you're wondering if there's any dangers you haven't noticed. Mm -hmm. um, there are different... You're looking down the street and you're seeing the snowfall, which is heavy. It's, um, it's heavy and thick, so... By this point, it's probably dropped about th like three or four inches on the ground. It's it's mm. it's a good crunch whenever mm. you sink into it. Um, and you're noticing there are kind of mounds underneath the snow in different areas. 
um, and you see a uh, Viv um, about to step on one of these mountains. I like just reach out and kind of like grab her and pull her back and just say, "There's a there's a lump on the ground. You're about to step on." <laughs> And um, seemed like a bad idea. She'll like just like look up at you and like kind of stare like quizzically at you, and then she'll like take a step back and kind of bring her face close to the lump. And okay. Try and see what the heck she's talking about. Okay. So when you bring your head down, you you start to see the 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 bit of raised earth that's been covered mm-hmm. with snow. And you start to see that it's almost like breathing. It's rising and falling just ever so slightly. And as you get close to it, it kind of sucks in. Uh-huh. And then you see it not happen. And then like a little far a little bit further away, you start to you see it raise up again. Like there's something underground or Almost like there's a corruption here that is living and breathing. Can Dante go over and kind of put his hand over where that mound was and turn the heat up a bit and try to melt the snow around it? Yeah, sure I'll definitely can. back up before you do that. Yeah. Keep so, your head on a swivel, V. It's about to get dangerous. <laughs> Pulls out her knife. <laughs> this so is a big walk, knife. <laughs> yeah. You walk up yeah, to... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You walk up to one of these mounds um, that have now shifted away from V and you, you place your hands uh, above it and you kind of turn on the oven, sort of speak, and you see the the wave of heat, the waves of heat, like a, like a summer day and the plains of like Nevada um, starts to encapsulate this and the snow uh, melts away from it. And... It almost looks like Earth for a second, but then you start to see kind of like that black tar kind of uh, kind of look to it. And as the, the heat gets a little bit more intense, it starts to quiver and shake, and you almost hear like a high-pitched scream as it kind of boils up and pops a little bit. Um, well, that was disgusting. Yeah, and some of it lands on your pant leg, and it does start to um, melt the pant leg. A little bit. Yeah, I'll uh, burn that off. <laughs> you do burn, so. Squirt some Purell on it. <laughs> yeah, good, good, good. <laughs> my pants are pretty tore up as it is, as most of my clothes are from, mm. you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I'll burn that off. Okay. Okay, yeah, so the ground is alive here? Is that what we're seeing? Did yeah. We stab it? No. Maybe not. Not if it's burning my pants off. <laughs> okay. Can we, we need... throw anything at it? Do you want to? I mean, she's got this knife. I mean, <laughs> she back up at like uh, a space that's not occupied, like where other people aren't immediately occupying it and throw her knife at it. Okay. Let's see what happens. I feel like this is a kick some ass roll because I want to see how accurately you throw this knife. Okay. So you're going to roll a uh, 2d6 and you're going to add your tough. Okay. I do have a yeah. plus one. Perfect. Seven. Seven. Okay. So that's a mixed success. Okay. Um, which, which means it's essentially a, a success with consequences. Um, awesome. So you throw your knife and it impacts with this nearby mound mm-hmm. and it just pops and explodes. And the same thing that happened to Dante happens to you as the black ichor throws back at you and uh-huh. lands on your skin. Um, I'm not going to give you a point of harm okay. yet, but, but you do get the sense that if this remained on your skin for a long enough time, it would start to alien blood sear through you. I squirt some Purell on her. Mm-hmm. It hurts. That burns. Don't, yeah. Don't <laughs> pop the ground zits. Um, they're dangerous. You do see uh, them, so you could avoid them. Okay. Since Reese has pointed out that that is a thing. 
Hmm. Okay. I don't really know if we can fix the whole ground, but uh, maybe keep going. Yeah. Are they like are lesions? Reason? Like, are they like horizontal, or do they seem to lead somewhere? Are they like roots? I would say that they're um, they're kind of random. Like, uh, if you look at it, there's not really any pattern to them. You just see, you know, like like somebody uh, going behind and, and burying mines. They're putting them in at random and trying to conceal them. It's just these mines are bubbly corrupted acid. Cool. They're cool. acid. Cool. They're corruption zits. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. avoid mm-hmm. the corruption zits. <laughs> Is my knife lost? Uh, you can go and retrieve it. Okay. <laughs> I am a kind DM. I'm a one trick pony right now. You're a one trick pony. <laughs> um, did uh, before I didn't get the chance to ask before y'all left the 18 bam, were there any weapons that you wanted to take with you? Second big knife. A second <laughs> big knife. You want a machete? That's a pretty big knife. <laughs> yeah, I, she wants them to be throwable. You know? I, I mean, a machete, machete is throwable. Like, determination. Yeah. <laughs> With enough determination. Anything is home. throwable. <laughs> Anything's throwable if you're not a coward about it. <laughs> yeah. um, I would have taken the hand sanitizer from the van. Okay. And um, you know what? Sure. Took the tear gas for the lulls. Okay. Well, it'll be. Uh, we'll roll. We'll roll a percentile to see if it works or not. Is there a? Was there maybe a pistol or something there, Dante? There were. The there were two shotguns. Two shotties. Two shot shotties. Gun. Just in case. Uh, are there okay. any like handguns? Or no? Do you, Do you want there to be? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> what kind of handgun? I have down a nine millimeter. Perfect. Okay. Sure. And we'll say that because they're hunters and I like supernatural, there's even different types of bullets for you. Oh, I there's know nothing bullets, about guns, iron but bullets. that's great. I even had salt-filled okay. shotgun shells the other day. Oh, for Ooh. flies? <laughs> and, or ghosts. <laughs> of sorts. <laughs> A it different type of pestilence. <laughs> what? Is salt they're, yeah, they're flies? like little things, it's, and they shoot salt a guns. little piece of salt yeah. to like get flies. Mm-hmm. I want one. Yeah. Pew, pew. Huh. I should buy one for my dad. <laughs> I'm gonna write that down later. Um, do you continue forward? From I'm now, going to. Animals are leaving you alone. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna do that hybrid thing that I do, so my face just gets like big and I get like a werewolf nose and stout and then you see like the wolf ears just kind of creep up just gonna you know increase that perception check with the smelling and the hearing things Got it. did and I give you a plus to that or did I just automatically give you your information I can't remember nah I, I think I just usually do it for flavor and you do whatever you want with it it's not an <laughs> official thing it's just I don't know, you're a werewolf I want you to feel as badass as you are you know <laughs> yeah yeah so um, and then she's just going to start picking her way. Uh, she doesn't like having all of these things behind her as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. So we can't see them, right? It was more just that we could smell them. Uh, you can, you're spotting the, the kind of glow of their eyes mm-hmm. the, when they pass any mm-hmm. um, uh, type of, of light source. Right now, the, the only light source are the the glow from inside the the chapel at the end of the road and the uh, light of the moon hey, mm-hmm. uh, peeking its way through the uh, the clouds um, kind of illuminating the ground a little bit. And do you um, still have your mop? Oh yeah. No, I have the mop. But like, um, she's... Pan isn't really looking at any of like the bulge sort of things in the ground. Mm. She, now since she spotted the eyes... She's very aware that they are surrounded on both sides. So she's mm-hmm. literally watching. Mm-hmm. Kind of like watching people's backs rather than what's actually going on. Mm-hmm. But yes, yeah, she has the mop. Okay. I'll just be like, hey, can I borrow that for a sec? Come here. And I'll she's... motion her to the other side of the corruption pimple. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she's just going to like take the mop 
and just poke a few of them from a distance. And these things are also corrupted, but who knows, maybe they're different types of corruptions. Maybe this will make it slippery or something, but hopefully like popping them in a way to make like a line behind them so that they can advance forward, but have small defense of sorts behind. Okay. And then I, you know, wipe off the end of it in the snow and just hand it back to Pan and just say, yeah. All right, let's keep going. We'll keep you hand pan out. a slightly shorter mop mm -hmm. than it was. <laughs> she more your size it. now. <laughs> the, the, there's the, like the a clean. <laughs> she looks at it and would like to take out her, her pocket knife and tie it to the top. Now I got a jabber. <laughs> a jabber. <laughs> <laughs> so she keeps that there. That's the scientific Super hairline. efficient. <laughs> <laughs> this is my yes. jabber. <laughs> my jabber. Also known as. <laughs> A bayonet. Pointed stick. Yes. Also known as a mop with a knife. Yeah. Or a spear. <laughs> mop knife. You guys don't have mop knives? Yeah. Mop knives? Yeah. yeah. Every, every mop in my house has a knife strapped to it. You don't, have a, you don't have a knife Roomba that you've just... Uh... Oh man, I wish I did. <laughs> that sounds great. As Scrat said earlier, the DM, don't do anything that I say <laughs> Basically, she wants to be able to poke stuff or jab stuff mm -hmm. at a distance because she mm -hmm. did still promise Reese that she won't go running in at every situation. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in no, Pan's no, no, no. head, at a distance, this is okay. We will say that your um, pokey stick uh, does uh, one harm. Nice. But what, what's... I will give you the not close one harm. So we will say that whenever you use this pokey stick, it gets one harm, but you don't get dealt harm because it's from a distance. Mm -hmm. Nice. That's, I love it. That's what I will do for you. Um, the corruption line doesn't seem to be doing much. Cool. Um, it does. Uh, it does burn them a little bit as there is some remaining uh flesh on them since the corruption has taken them so it just kind of burns it off but they don't really excuse mm. me hard to start. um and uh but they they're not feeling it okay oh well i like to try so we'll just we keep moving forward mm -hmm. okay ignoring the animals that are back should we like take care of these things Reese is just really like was that a, just, ah. was that stuff hey. um at all flammable the stuff did it burn when I when I burnt it off? Like did it catch fire when I burnt it off my pants? We'll say yes. Groovy. We'll say it's a type of tar, so I would say that it's probably somewhat flammable. Yeah. So Dante will look at Reese and go, "I like the way you think," and then he'll plunge his hand into the ground next to the tar, and you'll just see his whole arm catch on fire, and with it, the entire line that she'd set with the tars on fire. Uh, with the corrupted tar on fire, the um, encroaching animals now do absolutely take pause as the fire that is very well known for cleansing a corruption mm. is very harmful to them and they kind of recoil, um, locking eyes with you, Dante. Um, he snarls at them a little bit. Yeah, they recoil a little bit. Ooh, His eyes light sick up. burn. <laughs> he, he holds out a single yeah. fist for a fist bump. The non, the not fiery arm. <laughs> it's still a little warm. Yeah. It's, oh yeah, it's toasty for sure. Yeah. All the snow like... that's been falling is just making his his body mm. just sizzle. Mm -hmm. He's steamy. I feel like right this ways. is a weird old spice ad. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> it is. I'm not even holes. Um. So you've halted at least the the encroaching. Uh, corrupted uh, mountain lions and wolves mm. uh, that were circling you, at least holding them for the time being. Uh, Reese, in your uh, hybrid form, you do start to pick up um, sounds that uh, the, the others still in their more human forms are not picking up, and you, you do hear uh, a very low, guttural chanting of people in the church. There are people in that church. They're chanting. Usually not a good sign. Chanting. Never a good sign. No. And Need Pan's that on our like, shirt, too. Pan's like, wasn't this supposed to be an abandoned? 
village? Not totally abandoned. The people who were doing the ritual to summon the thing were here. So mm. I'd imagine that's probably the church that. seems like a weird place to do a demon summoning ritual. But the irony. Um, you are dealing with a group called the impious. So oh. <laughs> which means they are no longer pious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, are we, am I seeing any uh, spooky magical influences or spooky scary spirits? Scary <laughs> um, Good pull. Do I? See I'm going to have you roll yet? uh investigate a mystery. Okay. Um, two d six. So that's uh six plus one. The seven. So that's a mixed success. You do start to see um, uh, entities kind of piercing through the veil here and there. There are many of them. Almost uh, some of them you hear you look at them and you feel as though you could hear them if they could speak as mm -hmm. their, their mouths um, are opened and their faces show anguish. Um, especially closer uh, to the church and you're looking at the, the chapel itself and you see the, kind of like the, the charred edges of it um, and you can only imagine the, the kind of the what happened in this town to, to make it as desolate and as depraved as it is now. Um, you see some kind of wafting in and out of uh, the uh, the buildings to your left and to your right. Um, and they all seem to be pulled uh, towards the the chapel. And you can see how some of them almost feel like they're trying to uh, stop themselves from being pulled into the mouth of whatever this is. And with your sight, everything starts to kind of go black and white, almost like uh, Will and the uh, Upside Down where things mm. just are quiet and you look around and you, you almost can't see your allies around you as what seems to be like a, a magical darkness just starts to emanate inside of this chapel out, uh, almost like a black hole as things are just kind of starting to get pulled in. And there is, there's no color, there's just void and blackness. Yeah, this sounds like, I guess there's so much energy that's probably very overwhelming. Mm -hmm. um, and Dante would notice something that like V does whenever something like this happens. And she just, you know, basically is very much like, uh, like head in her hands, start like shaking her head, um, probably like muttering to herself. And honestly, probably she would admit some probably something magic would happen as sort of like a release. Okay. Um, uh, I, I imagine to like get rid of that kind of like overload almost. You want kind of like a wave? Yeah, like pro it's probably something she can't help. Um, mm -hmm. She's like trying to control it, but it makes sense that once she gets overloaded, she would try to, um, you know, extinguish some of that extra magic. Okay. And uh, how would that, and what would that look like? We, I'm, I'm not going to make you roll for anything. If you feel that that's something that your character would do to try and dampen it out, uh, describe it to me. Um, I think it would be probably just like a flash of like light out from her. Okay. And that sort of, you know, like surrounding area. Um, and then just sort of dissipates. So you watch as V's uh, eyes, her gray eyes, um, start to try and take in uh, her surroundings, muttering a little something under her breath. And you see as she starts to get a little bit more overwhelmed and almost, especially to you, Reese, almost like when you're standing next to um, like a, a power uh, a power outlet where you start to hear that you start to hear that emanating from V as she pulls her hands over her eyes and her face and expounds this very bright light that kind of uh, explodes out from her. Uh, yeah, there's a lot wrong with this place. 
Yeah, um, Dante is going to go stand by V, and she's cool to put a hand on her shoulder and kind of reassure her that she's not here alone. Yeah, definitely something's going on in that church. I, I'm afraid to see what it is, though. All right, stay with us. You'll be fine. Question, are there any windows on the church? There are uh, kind of two... And I don't mean like the big stained glass one that I come up with and everyone's in front. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I know know what you're talking about. Yeah, so it's like an (laughs) old school um, Western chapel, you know, Mm -hmm. kind of thing. Uh, It's it's mostly made out of wood. Um, You can see kind of in the front there were two uh, single pane kind of windows. The the glass has long been gone. you one of them is blocked and you're not really seeing a whole lot of light as you can tell that the roof itself has caved in uh but the other one how close are you wanting to get to this chapel she will get as close as she can to look through the window to see what's it but again she's not like strolling up and knocking on the window and waving she's trying to be really subtle with it you got it as subtle as you can with somebody who just blew up a light bulb um <laughs> you kind of well, uh, they're distracted now i'm going the other yeah. way <laughs> so you, you see you see two windows uh in the front one's kind of covered and you see a couple uh lining the the sides you get the sense that they're probably open in the summertime to let in air and um you see through it kind of up where the podium would be uh three uh old like really nasty looking old um jaundiced uh and and black uh priest garbs uh standing in a circle uh chanting while one holds uh, a tome and in it in the center you see um what you kind of ran into a subset of them when you went up against kind of like the whispers where they're really quick and they're really, uh, and they had very elongated claws. Um, and in the center, you see what I classify as a Wendigo, uh, which was a, 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 a man who's, who's corrupted after eating people, becoming cannibalistic and corrupting its body. And it's, it's hairless, uh, naked, but it, you don't really, it's not like they're naked, naked. It's just that they're all skin now, um, uh, writhing on the floor as, uh, from the ether, little cuts are made across its bodies as, um, this man continues to read from the tome joined in a chant by the other two. And you see candles and lanterns lit all around them. And she sort of puts her nose to the window um, as well and is sort of just looking in but is trying to sort of slink back as well and will relay what she's seen. But before she does, is there um, the tome they're reading? Mm -hmm. Does it look... uh, So are they holding it or is it on something? They are holding it. Okay. Okay, then she'll slink back and relay to the group what's going on. Okay. And she'll sort of head back towards Dante and V and be just like, a little bit of a problem. <laughs> um, and we'll explain that there is a group of people um, in there definitely doing something demonic. And would I know it's a Wendigo? Would I know... Those, yeah, I feel yeah. like you've read enough books in Amanada's library, and yeah. you've probably, especially being up in the mountains, where a lot of old settlers turned to cannibalism in long, long trips, you would probably have run into a couple of Wendigos as they are okay. also immortal. Um, she's probably just going to be like, um, and a Wendigo, like sort of, as much as she's used to this, she's still not sure how used to these things that like Dante and VR because she, she doesn't know them um, well enough so she's just she's kind of testing the water as how much are you going to believe if I say that 
Wendigo. <clears throat> Are they torturing it, or is it is it helping them? Part of a ritual more than anything, I'd say. Sorry. <laughs> Good. We 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 stand <laughs> cat friends here. <laughs> and out of nowhere, the cat jumps onto Dante, <laughs> rustles his beard, <laughs> and then runs away. <laughs> He else he's, he's highly allergic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, Pan's like, so we got a bunch of people trying demonic worshippers something plus Wendigo, um, and they have a tome that they're reading from. Those aren't just chants that's coming from actual text. Um... Would I know if, like, disrupting, like, their candles or salt circle or whatever would screw up their ritual? Roll for me. Just roll a straight sharp roll. It's not going to be an investigative mystery or anything like that. Just roll straight sharp. Actually, no. Scratch that. Roll weird. Okay. Eight. Eight. Um... It depends on the ritual. Sometimes messing with the components can halt a ritual. Mm -hmm. um, from what Pan was describing, um, their their main component is that tome and the Wendigo itself. She didn't see any salt lines or any um, charms or pictograms that you that she could see. Uh, so you get the sense that the way to halt the ritual is to literally to take out the people who are directly Doing involved it. with it. Yep. Okay. The power, they're they are corrupt enough that the power lies within them and they haven't needed components for a very long time. Okay. Well this sounds um like it could grow to become something quite serious. And our best bet is to disrupt this ritual before we have to deal with whatever is being summoned whether that be destroying the book and then taking out the summoners or vice versa reese like cracks her knuckles and for the first time and also maybe the first time pan has ever seen she will like give a big like wolfy grin <laughs> and then she's like I can disrupt stuff. And then she steps back and she just like explodes into this <laughs> giant werewolf uh, that is like six foot tall and six foot across. I'm basically a ball of fur and like all my hair just like stands up and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to run straight through whatever window that was or building <laughs> or a door or just, you know, in I go. <laughs> I think Reese, uh, I think Pan looks towards Reese is like, um, we may want to move fast. Also, yes, she is a very good distraction. So um, whoever can get to the book first, go. And she'll probably uh, charge after mm -hmm. um, Reese if Reese is already barreling into this. Church. Yeah, just break out <laughs> running. <Dante. laughs> Rolling up. Yeah, Dante will look at V. He'll say, if you need me, call. And then he'll start to walk towards the building. And as he does, he gets real hot. You see all of his body starts to crackle and he so extends hot. his claws and he tears all his clothing and his skin off his chest and embers start to come up as he howls. And he basically engulfs himself in flame and melts away his skin to reveal a, a hellhound underneath, a fiery, flamey werewolf. And his uh, eyes are burning, burning hot, white hot. He's gonna go right, so right through the right through the front door. He's gonna just light that thing on fire. Awesome. And V will just take off her hood and like look at her hands and like like a little crackle of kind of like like blue electricity uh, among her fingers, and we'll just you know shuffle up. I'm running in with my stick. <laughs> with her stick. Yeah. Yeah. I the only thing I can think of is yet. like those volcanoes that erupt, and whenever they erupt, there's lightning because of the the, mm. the ionic charges in the air. Mm. I know Tag things. team. And so yeah. I'm just like, I'm really in digging this. So kind much of science. Like, oh my gosh. Like, listen, yeah. you know, I like the whole visual aspect. Mm -hmm. Appreciate. Pan has a stick. 
It's a good stick. <laughs> the, the stick. Yeah. The stick. The ultimate stick. I stick learned how destiny. to make it. I learned how to make it on YouTube. Yeah. So sure she's did. she's she's not transforming yet, but she's running after Breeze. Perfect. And Dante, with your transformation, whatever corrupted um, animals were left to possibly uh, try to halt your progress, turn tail and run. They know who you are, and they want nothing to do with it. Yeah, that's uh, good. Reese, you're running in. You're diving through a window. <laughs> cool. Uh, you see before you uh, three old yellow jaundiced clergymen uh, with rotting teeth and hollow eyes uh, standing in a circle. Um, who mm -hmm. are you going after first? Mm -hmm. So I haven't read the backstory on this, but since this ritual was, you know, kind of time sensitive and there's a giant demon coming, would you say that I am acting under pressure maybe? Um, Could, sure. Is that a thing? Because yeah. I basically just want to like be a ball and just like roll over all of them and just like knock them all prone. Trample them. Okay. I you, don't know if that's a thing like, I can do. Under the timetables I have behind the scenes of what <laughs> you all go a certain amount of rounds without killing all of these things. Mm. Um, all right, so you're going to try and barrel through all of them. I will allow you to barrel through one at a time. Okay. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't know. Do you have like a bowling ball move? I wish I did. I have. <laughs> I mean, you know, I have something that I can protect someone without rolling. So if you could, you know, if this was a way to knock everyone down before Pan runs in here with her tiny stick and knife, like that might be a protection. No, nah, okay. I'll like just, a giant Sonic I'll just, the Hedgehog ball. I, yeah. I, I, normally I'd be like, sure, but this one I'm like, hmm, that's reaching. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, so I guess I'm just going to... Go ahead and try and hit him. Are you gonna let me roll cool, or I'll roll kick some ass? Oh, which 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 move are you using? Um, I was basically asking for the act under pressure to see if I could replace my thing with that thing, but it doesn't matter because sure. I rolled a I rolled a nine anyways for kick some ass. Okay, so you roll. So in total, it's a nine. It is a nine. Okay, nine total. Yeah nine total um so you... unless these are they used to be human right uh-huh they appear like i do get a plus one towards humans okay so because okay. they carried my loss or they caused my loss well i don't think these ones cause your loss but they're human. it says the breed of monster that caused my loss we talked about it in another yeah. game before no, when I'll, i was like does I'll, that count there's, there's probably enough human in there so you have a 10 Yay! Um, so you um, are able to do your harm to them, and you get to choose between um, giving a plus one to another ally, uh, dealing an extra harm, getting one harm less dealt upon you, or forcing them into a position that you want them. Was there one that was create an opportunity? Am I imagining that from masks? I think it's the move them into... Right. A position yeah. that you want cool. them. Yeah, I want to move them away from the book somehow. Away so whichever one is holding the book is the one that I would like to attack, and I would basically just like to roll into them so that they go sprawling and the book goes flying somewhere else, is how Reese pictures it in her hyperactive dog brain. Okay. Uh, so, and you are using your claws, so that's a two harm. Two harm to that guy. And you try to push him away from the book? Yeah, I basically want to knock in him so that the book goes, like, flying off somewhere, maybe. Okay. Uh, so you knock into um, this, uh, into one of the members of the Impious raking your claws across him um, and uh, opening up and in where you would hope to see a, a red and human-like blood, you see that corrupted ichor that you're so used to seeing as he kind of hisses at you. And when he does, you just see these nubs of rotten teeth. Um, the smell is disgusting. And I'm gonna uh, bite you. <laughs> yeah, it's like you're gonna have to brush your teeth later after that one. And um, the the book goes flying as he still continues to mumble under under his breath. Um, 
these incantations and you look at the book and you look at him and where there was ink on the book, there's now ink on his arms. Mm. And he continues to chant as he stares at you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Who's next? Um, I feel I was running, so I might be sure um, were. right behind. Do I see the guy whose arms are starting to like become this ink sort of thing from behind Reese? I would say yes. If you saw him go flying, you saw the book. If sure, yeah. If she sees the one with the um the ink sort of coursing up the arm, she's going to almost try and uh use Reese as like um, a vault <laughs> um, and she's going to probably drop um, the mop for a moment sort of jump on the back and try and throw herself over Reese because she's no way I think she's going to get round with um, everything going on and she's going to transform midair and just try and with her claws take this person out you got it go ahead and I assume you're rolling your precision so roll your sharp yeah, she's aiming Chat. to make him quiet. So oh, hang on, hang on. This is Alice doing that. Uh, 13. Thir- I, think the, I think that's the best row I've ever rolled in this mm-hmm. game. Wow. Thank you, magical guys. <laughs> that's a very crit. I swear it's the okay. nothing else. Um, I believe whenever you do a full success, you do three damage instead of two on your precision strike. Um, so you do three damage to this, and you also get to choose between giving a plus one to another hunter taking one less damage doing an extra damage or moving them into a position where you want them i think i'm gonna go for extra damage purely because this person is still chanting because you got it quiet, so it looks pissed um mm-hmm. but it is uh, still standing um and it does lash out at you with one um uh, with a, a dagger that it kept at its side. Um, and I believe in your wolf form, you do have an armor. Yeah, I have one armor. I think. Um, so it slashes at you and it uh, it barely uh, passes the skin, at least on this pass. Okay. And he kind of uh, gruntle, uh, like grunts. Um, and the two other now seeing the commotion uh, keeping in their chant as if they are... They are um, possessed by this uh start to uh come at you drawing uh two daggers of their own um come after you and reese okay um dante i believe you were the next closest and you're muted my love there we go that's better Yay! Now that we're give okay. me those dulcet tones <laughs> yeah so um yeah, I think uh, from yeah, he's he's going through the front, and uh, I think from the opposite side, you'd see like the metal components of the door start to melt away, and the wood start to smoke, and he just explodes through the door, and he's fiery and pissed. So, who is attacking? Is anyone being attacked right now that he can see? Yeah. So there is the one guy uh, who, um, excuse me, uh, has the who looks pretty pretty beat up. Uh, that Reese and Pan have sacked on. And then there's two of the others that are within like six feet that are coming towards them. Okay. They look like they've got uh, words on arms cat tied up pretty well. Uh, they are wearing long sleeves, so you don't know. Oh, okay. Uh, but th- does Reese and Pan look like they've they've got the dude they're on handled or is... Is he still uh, I up mean, and Reese, fighting, or is, is he is he down? Like he is prone at the moment, and he is okay. bleeding. And Pan and Reese are both kind of on top of him, um, so they do have him covered. Yeah, he'll leap. He'll leap towards the other two, going for uh, going for them. Then, okay. And he's gonna try to slash at him with his fiery claws. Fire Dude. claws. Yeah, Roll there's it. like mass, mon frere. Lava, I I brimstone I coming out of his mouth. He's 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 horrifying. Look, he's great. Okay, let's see how we do. First roll of the game. Roll to four plus two. That is a failure. Failure, yeah, yeah. Um, so mark experience. Okay. Um, it's important because you never know how much you're going to fail. That's I true. will say that um, people in chat did give you an advantage. You can choose 
to roll a third die to try and succeed, or yeah. you can hold on to that for later on. I'm going to roll it. It's my okay, first attack. Roll the third I'm gonna, die. I'm going to do roll it. Roll the lowest one you had, I guess. Okay. So it's two twos. And a three. So seven. Seven is a mixed success. I'll take it. Okay. Um, so you uh, launch towards um, one of the other uh, impious. Uh, what is your damage? So I've What's got... damage? <laughs> so much damage. Um, I've got Claws of the Beast. So natural okay. attacks get a plus one. And then, so my natural attacks is two for the Claws. And then I added one for my extra. Okay. So is that what, four total? So... Two. two plus one plus one. Where are you getting the other plus one? Claws of the beast, natural attacks get a plus one. Yes. And base then your natural attack two. does two. And then I, uh, I, I I didn't pick two bases. I picked a base and an extra. Am I looking at that right? Extra, add one harm to a base. Oh, okay. Pick a base and add an extra to it or two bases. So you, okay. Yep. Four harm. Jesus. All right. And what does it look like when you dig your claws into this impious? Uh, it, yeah. So it, it digs into him and like the skin around it starts to char and burn. And like, as it rakes through him, you'll see like the flesh starts to melt away and, and uh, like, it's, it's almost cauterizing the entry point as he goes, but that Icarus oozing out of it as well and kind of burning off as he does it awesome and, and do you growling. have any armor naturally i don't even know where i would find that <laughs> it's not like we haven't i haven't played this game like eight million times uh, monster breeds i don't say, have any improvements or anything so i would say that as a werewolf you would have plus you would have a one armor so i mean i'm just, I'm, I'm wreathed in flame if that yeah matters. no you you totally have a one arm um it's um it without even breaking eye contact continues to mutter under its breath and now that you do have a, a closer look at it you see the the ink on its skin as well um as it continues to mutter in unison with the other two um, you did do a good amount of damage to it, um, but it does kind of reach forward and plunge in a dagger. You have one armor, uh, so you take only uh, one um, one harm. Gotcha. Harm marked. Harm marked. V, you are up. All right, so she's going to uh, shuffle up. Okay. Uh, and I... You know, why not? I'd like to try and jinx uh, the one that Dante is attacking. Okay. And how so, are you going to jinx this person? Um, so it gives me, like, options that I can use based on my role. Perfect. Let's go ahead and roll and see what happens. Okay. Ooh. So, uh... 10 plus 2, 12. Perfect. That is a huge success. So you get to hold 2. Um, and yes. you can choose to use these at any point. Uh, okay. You can choose to use one now and one later or both now. Um, and they are, you know, interfere with a hunter, giving them a minus 1. But we don't do that. Uh, help a hunter, giving them a plus 1 uh, by interfering with the enemy. Interfere with what a monster, minion, or bystander is trying to do. Inflict a harm on the target due to an accident. The target finds something you left for them, or the target loses something that you will soon find. Um, okay, so it's the plus one forward with that, like, add on to the roll? Yep, so you I mean? choose okay. a hunter of your choosing, and whenever they roll next, they get to add another mm -hmm. one to it. Okay, well, I'll go ahead and use one of them to uh, cause one harm due to an accident to the one that Dante's attacking. Okay. Um, and I don't know, maybe, like, some glass breaks and falls on him. You something, got it. Something falls on him, you know? In the in the scuffle, um, and Old Dante... Crushing damage. Yeah, Dante uh, pushing them down. Uh, you see kind of one of the pillars above uh, break loose and, and strikes him in the head, kind of slicing his face a little bit, uh, dealing him a single harm. And did you want to use your other um, one now, or did you want to hold on to it? Um, I'll hold on to it. You got it. So remember that you have one uh, hold on a jinx that you can spring at any moment if you'd like. Because we don't really have initiative. Just make sure you don't talk over anyone. 
All right. Um, the uh, the cultist who got struck in the face kind of looks up and almost stares at you, knowing while he still mutters this chant. Um, and at the at that, uh, is this is still uh, muttering. You feel the the ground begin the the shake and quake as um, the muttering begins to elevate a little bit louder. Um, and Reese, it is now your turn. Ah, uh, Reese is so like torn right now. Um, seeing so, seeing all of the chaos that's going on, Reese will quickly like look around and, <laughs> and notice all of these cultists with all this stuff written all over them. Hmm. And very begrudgingly, she will turn back into a human and go into her first fight as a human because she's never done that before. But she okay. can't use this sword when she's a werewolf. <laughs> So she goes back into human form and then like, oh, here's my sword. And then is like, all right, sword guy 982, don't fail me now. <laughs> and I would like to cut this guy's arm off. Yeah. All right. Hell yeah. All um, right, he's prone, right? So I want to just like, yeah, just get that sword like right like, in the shoulder blade and like. Hack him down like a tree. I'm mm -hmm. into it. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. So roll to kick some ass. All right. I will. I will. That's a six on the first die and a four on the second plus two is a twelve. Blah. Jesus. I'm a, do I still have twelve disadvantages? Because I yes. swear every week y'all have... I don't know what you You them, never use I, them. I know because I always feel bad because I want you to succeed. Use it. I'll, I'll re-roll I'll re that six. Yeah, if I can re-roll it. Yeah. It's Rolls a two. Down. So now that's an eight. It's still two, a success. But four, it's not a six. huge success. Yeah. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but the sword is pretty beefy it is a it um i don't know if i ever gave you the stats for it it nope. is a three harm close wow. messy and <laughs> it's essentially a smite sword so oh. it ignores any um invulnerabilities that a nice. creature has it's essentially i love yeah, I love the idea that Reese has just been carrying around this sword and using it to like sillily like do things, and it's like an epic as fuck sword. <laughs> so you, uh, where's my other thing? He was up to five harm. Okay, um, I'm keeping track of everything. Don't judge. Don't judge me. Mm -hmm. uh, you come swinging down and completely uh, eviscerate. Eviscerate? Not eviscerate. Mm -hmm. Cut clean, almost like a lightsaber. Like a warm knife through butter. This arm just kind of, you cut through it and then it just slaws off slowly as he looks at you and <sighs> and dies. <laughs> cool. Good, 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 good. Almost like comedic friends, Phoebe, with uh -huh. her bandages. <laughs> Can we say that the sword did? Or sounded like something epic, so that Reese realized how epic it was. Like there Absolutely. was like, a, ah, and then she's just like, <laughs> almost drops it. And it's just like, okay, who's next? Only thing I can think of is kind of like when uh, uh, Arthur got Excalibur for the first time, and it sings mm -hmm. when he comes mm -hmm. like, yeah. the water. Uh, yeah, yeah, Swords of Stone, excellent movie. It sounds like that, you know. Mm -hmm. Nice. And she's just uh, like, so that uh, is. <laughs> that is one uh, cult is down. The muttering uh, still uh, continues. Um, oh, and I yell, cut their tongues out. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Um, Pan, it's your turn. Um, Pan has this sort of like almost like puppy look where she tips her head to the side and like the ears flop as she watches Reese do this. It's just like. She's probably like, damn, but it's just like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> through it. But if there's one coming up behind, like Reese or anything, if there's one of these cultists, she is, she's got her, these, the one thing about her, she's a very small werewolf, but she has very razor sharp claws. And if any of the, one of the ones that's still chanting, she's just whoa, straight in the throat to stop it from talking. So. Um, before you do that, why don't you just roll me a, um, just roll me a straight sharp roll. Straight sharp roll. Oh dear. Oh dear. Six? Okay. That's a failure. You can mark experience. Yay! <laughs> um, as you go down to try and slice open this, uh, cultist's, um, 
throat, you uh, see kind of appearing out of the ether this kind this uh the shadowed creature with long claws and you kind of recognize it as one of those whispers that you had dealt with as a cave as it pierces through the veil as the the chanting kind of elevates to another level um and, and leaps on you pushing you back um dealing you uh to harm which i believe is reduced to one for you because you do have an armor mm -hmm. um and a uh, a whisper is now on the playing field. So you have two cultists and a whisper. <laughs> okay. So do I still get to attack or? No, because you feel no. Sharp roll. I was gonna say because it's already done the sharp roll. Okay. Yep. Uh, Dante, it is now your turn. Oh boy. Uh, yeah, Dante is pretty single-minded right now and ripping this guy apart so he's gonna attack that cultist again perfect he's and v if you whenever ass. you want to pull the trigger on it just put your hand up so i see you and i'll make sure i stop whatever i'm saying if, whenever you want to interject okay, not saying you have to i'm just saying that's an option dante roll the kiss on my come on dante kick some ass here you nasty hellhound you and i believe Great. um v and dante you both have been given another advantage everybody yes, thank you so much for that you. very much appreciate that Thanks, chat. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I still have like six disadvantages Thanks, I can push out. Keep, keep I like you used one keep on coming. me and it went from 12 to six. You do I don't not have I have. count them. <laughs> I don't count them. Um, yeah, so I rolled a seven plus two, so nine. Nine. All right, perfect. And you're coming down on the cultist that you already had that you don't That's correct. For donkulous amount of. Yes. Is that four four damage I do with these claws. Does that these make fiery, it a success? Fiery claws. It does. Yeah. Okay. We'll do that. It makes it makes it a ridiculous success. Okay, I'll do, use it then. Oh, thanks, V. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, well, V, you didn't have to use your plus one if you didn't want to. Is what I was saying. He already rolled a ridiculous success. Oh, it was already a success. Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, got it. So hold on to that. Um, so you come down with four damage with your fire claws against this cultist. And what does it look like when you kill this thing? Oh, wonderful. So I heard Reese yell, rip out their tongues. So mm. Dante's got his left hand kind of claws buried into the back of this guy's neck. And then he takes the other hand and plunges it, fire and all right into his mouth and rips all that right out. Kind of like splits the head right in half as he does it and just sloshes it on the ground and growls at the whisper. Perfect. Um, the the whisper growls back as from the shadows um, two more uh, emerge as the cultist now looking a little bit nervous as to uh, the hellhound that is dealing a I did not give these people enough harm. This is way too powerful. <laughs> it's like shit. Um, uh, stands behind uh, continuing his mutterings as two more of these shadow whispers uh, emerge, um, kind of blockading him. Yeah. Well done. Two cultists are now off the playing field. I really got to make these encounters harder, but I almost killed Reese once and I was like, ah, oh, maybe I got to step it back. V. Kill me. <laughs> you get him. Get him, V. You kill all of Pam's okay. friends. I'm the last. I know. <laughs> I want to try and uh, use my hex on the last cultist. Okay. So that's a weird roll, right? I believe it is, yes. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Okay, um, so that was really bad. It was a three. So can I okay. re-roll that one? Use your advantage? Yeah, so re-roll the one, right? Yeah, just roll one dice. Okay. Six! So, so six plus. So would it be the six plus the two still? Yeah. So you so would take six the... plus two is eight plus two weird for 10. 10. Nice. That's yeah. how you. Damn advantages. Chat, <laughs> leave me alone. Thank so you, I... Chat. <laughs> Aya, be meaner. I don't know how to be meaner. <laughs> so um, you get a normal thing, I think, as well. A normal what? Yeah, there was like different effects. Okay, so what are you going to do with this hex? Um, Contract the disease. The target immediately suffers uh, to harm. Uh, yeah. The target breaks something precious or important. Yeah, we're going to do the to harm ignoring armor. Okay. 
Uh, so, and what does it look like when this uh, cultist magically is dealt to harm? So I said she has like the blue electricity mm -hmm. in her hands and she just like, like really like lazily points out like a finger and it just like explodes from her like pointer finger and shoots him. Right. Okay. Um, still muttering, he locks eyes with you as the, the crackling energy surges through his body and he seizes ever so slightly um, and kind of dead eyes you. And you, um, you feel a twinge at your back as cutting through um, are these kind of uh, piercing shadow daggers um, as they kind of rake across your back and you take a harm. Ooh, okay. Everything has a consequence. I just I mean, realized... Yeah. Does anyone else remember the show Heroes? Remember when yeah. Kirsten Bell was in Heroes? Is that yeah. the blue lightning? She, she did blue lightning, right? That's what I'm picturing right now. Kirsten yeah, Bell was so. in Heroes? Yeah. No, Kirsten Bell. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I remember Married that. to Dak yeah. Shepard, Kirsten Bell? I can only remember. Yeah. Yeah. Owner of Free Toad Sloth, Kirsten Bell. <laughs> yeah. Wait, she owns one now? Man. I think I think he got her one for like her birthday. It was like a YouTube video. That was I think it was just a surprise. At least that's what I was on. They fully own it, and that's wild. Anyways, sorry. That just I had just had like a major deja vu because I was that's it. That's exactly it. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's so yeah. cool. What a cool I dig character. It. I dig it. Yay! Fire All and right. lightning. What a combo. With uh, with another raised voice of the chanting of the the cultists, the ground rumbles uh more even more violently, as uh, from almost all around you you hear this roar and this cacophonous that almost rattles the building and you wonder if it's about to collapse on you um as we start the round again reese it is now your turn there are now three shadow demons that stand in your way between you and the cultists in my way define in my way like if I try and move past them, they will attack me, kind of thing. They are they are taking a very protective stance against the person who has summoned them. Mm. So cultist, shadow demon, shadow demon, shadow demon, as they kind of just are like please and don't do <laughs> I I'm gonna be a gif at one point of just man. Yeah, I mean is it possible to make some kind of move to get through the demons and just like end up on the other side? How about this? You roll a read a bad situation. Cool. I was just looking at that. And just it because it has the questions what's the best way in and what's the best way out? Mm -hmm. I have a seven. You have a seven. Okay. So you are wanting to know what's the best way in? Yes. Um, you notice, um, that hanging a little precariously, you don't know if it would hold your weight or not. It would be a little bit of a gamble mm. above their head is kind of like a, um, a, a chandelier mm -hmm. that if you wanted to, you could try to hop on that and down upon the cultist over, over it. But it would be mm -hmm. a gamble as to whether it would hold your weight. But outside of that, all the other avenues are blocked. It's either up and over or through. Stop giving advantages to my guest players. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of... Um, do I get to know what kind of role it would be to make that jump? Just because I have no idea what... Um, I think... I would make that probably a a straight tough roll to to see if you can even make that distance. And I will pick a number. We'll we'll pick odds or evens, and I'll roll a die and see. So, all right, all roll right. Tough roll. I don't know. I don't. I wonder if like 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 they would like the people who made this game ever come pop in and see how I'm bastardizing it. <laughs> no, you're doing it good. This is how we play TTRPG. We just make shit up. Yeah. Um, Improv. 
That's the best way to do it. So I got a six. Okay. Have I taken any harm? Not yet. Okay. Then that is a six. Does have a plus one forward that she hasn't used yet that if she wanted to, she could. Hey, B! (laughs) I run Please. up and I start jumping towards the chandelier and then my fingers like scrape it and I can't quite reach it. I'm like, V! I don't know why you help me, you're magic. V, so, like, you see Bree's trying to run over you. and jump on it and you get the sense of what she's trying to do. Yeah. Um, and you see that she might not make it to your target. How would you want to interfere so that she succeeds? Um, and so she, you're jumping? I'm jumping to try and grab the chandelier to swing over the demon wall to get to. She'll just like throw her hands out and this like poof of air like nice. blows you up so that you can reach it. Like like, like, like a little boost nice. in the air. Nice. You're awesome. Thank you. <laughs> and I grab the chandelier. All right. Nice. Odds are even. Oh gosh. I think the odds are that I will fail. So I pick evens. <laughs> It's evens. It's a four. Yes. So the gods have the gods have faded that the chandelier miraculously under your six by six foot cube of a form. No, you're no, in I'm human right yeah. now. Um, which is probably why it was four. Remember mm-hmm. something I didn't. Um, mm-hmm. holds under your weight as you swing over these as they're trying to uh, get your ankles and you're able to drop right over this cultist. Nice. So, was that my turn? Um, or we'll can I like that, attack that, on the that on the swing? next turn you'll be able to attack? Perfect, because that was Sweet. a lot. So I just landed like next to the cultist. Yeah, you're okay. swinging midair and it looks really cool, Matrixy. I <laughs> stand down, up. Trinity flipping over a wall. Nice. And then I stand up and I say, "What's up, sword? <laughs> sup? <laughs> sup, dude, sup? <laughs> Pan, it's your turn. As you just saw." Reese, whatever the fuck she just did. Some sort of Robin Hood shit. Yes. <laughs> what kind of parkour bullshit is this game? Listen, um, Sword Guy 982 had some really legit videos that just taught me some new shit, okay? <laughs> Amanada didn't teach me none of that. I feel like you're just matricing, downloading I know Kung Fu. Like, yeah. brain. <laughs> so, can I just get another form of the layout now that Reese has just vaulted? <laughs> you got it. So, you are standing over a bloody corpse of a cultist in mm-hmm. front of you are three shadow demons kind of like further up on the pulpit three shadow demons built kind of like a wall um reese did a darth maul or obi-wan kenobi like f- backwards flip over darth maul standing behind him um and then to uh your right you have another slain burned charred body of a cultist member with dante in his four full hellhound form standing and then behind you if i understand this correctly a little ways away you have v and her crackling energy um fucking up all my best plans i think then i feel like dante and v are uh, rocking whatever station they're at um <laughs> so i think she's gonna make her way towards reese but because she's in werewolf form uh-huh. she's just gonna walk and slash to try and break down the people in front got it so you're gonna go straight for the shadow demons yeah, she's literally like it's almost like she's trying to just walk in a straight line to get to Reese, but mm-hmm. she's almost like how people use like um, the machete that she has in her bag to get through tough terrain. She's doing it with her claws. You got it. Um, go ahead and roll your precision attack, unless you're wanting to do a straight tough roll across the board. No, no, I'll use precision. Sorry. Okay. Nine. Nine. Okay. So you uh, reach forward um, doing two, because you only did a regular uh, success, Mm -hmm. uh, to the shadow demon in front of you. Um, Fortunately, not able to move it uh, very, very much, but you did at least uh, deal some damage to it um, as it lashes out at you, uh, slashing across your, your chest and dealing you a single harm as well. As it is that a single harm including my armor or does my armor That is a single harm I it does you two harm taking away the and armor I get the, yeah, so yeah, one yeah. harm. Okay. Uh Dante. Oh boy. The Dante's having a blast. Um blast Yeah, blast. so yeah, so he uh he saw that uh what are they called they're called whispers. Yeah. 
Yeah, he saw that whisper snarl back at him, so he's gonna he's gonna run at that guy. And, uh, you got you got claws, it. Claws bore and ready to tear him up. Okay, roll kick some ass. We'll kick some ass. Let's see here. All right, ass kicking. Do your thing. Rolled an eight, so a ten. Um, uh, so that is a, a great success. So you do your four harm mm-hmm. or like that's the, cause you have the two plus one and then the other one. Um, so you can either decide to move an entity into a position that you want them to be in, deal an extra harm, be dealt one less harm or, uh, give a plus one to another ally. Um, let's see. I'll say uh, I'll do plus one harm. Like as he's bringing that claw up, it really starts to glow white hot, his claws, and he slashes it right across the chest. Okay, you slice through this shadow demon and it falls like a, like a house of cards. It folds almost in on itself as the, the flame of your being just cuts through this corruption that makes it, uh, makes it corporeal. And it kind of ashes up, um, almost like the reverse of you when you crackle in flame. It just crackles, dries, and just <laughs> as it shatters to the ground in a, in a ball of ash. Almost like cool Buffy the Vampire Slayer when you used to stake the vampires. Kind of like yeah, that. absolutely. Yeah, yeah um, Dante lets out a big monstrous hellhound, and all the embers fly out, and all the cracks. It is like his fiery mane lights super hot. Like he's he's really charging up now. But he's, the he's one behind it does uh, does reach out to you and does deal you a harm, yeah. um, lashing out. Um, but I will say that it because you're flaming a thing that it also gets a harm because that doesn't make any sense as to why touching you wouldn't hurt it. <laughs> I am on fire. This wolf is on fire. All right, uh, V. It is now your turn. You have used both of your jinx, mm-hmm. so it is now reset. So that means it's time for another jinx attempt. Okay, go ahead and roll some word. Um, is there any, uh, enemy that's, like, not engaged right now? Any of, like, the shadow demons that, like, don't have someone directly fighting them? One is on Dante now. Dante killed one and the other attacked him. One is on Pan, and then Reese is on the cultists. So all are covered as far as you know. Ooh. I got 12. (laughs) Um. (laughs) All right. (laughs) You know, plus two, yeah. 14. Um, That's fine. So you get another two, and you get to decide um, between those uh, same options again. Okay. And you said one's on Pan? Uh, one Shadow Demon is on Pan, one Shadow Demon is on Dante, and then uh, Reese has got the Cultist. Okay, I'll do one harm to the one on Pan, and then I will hold my other to potentially like give it to someone else. You got it. Um, Pan, you're looking at the shadow demon in front of you as suddenly a burst forth of electrical energy surges across its body and as it spasms um, and smolders ever so slightly. Giving a peek back, you see uh, V in all of her spooky glory. Um, I think jinxing. again, eyes widen like at V and just has that sort of... I think Pam forgets half the time she's in werewolf form. She tries to talk and it is just coming out. It's, like, it's not right, but it's almost like if a, if a werewolf could give a thumbs up and move on, that's what's happening. <laughs> um, at the end of that, as the cultist continues to chant, the ground that has been shaking and trembling against the crack as um, forth from it, kind of like Hellboy style, when Hellboy opens up the gates to... Um, Shaka Khan, I can't remember that thing's name. Uh, as the tentacles start to uh, reach through the clouds, one starts to kind of reach through um, the uh, a rift that is forming in the air. Uh, Reese, it's your turn. See that shit go down. I look at it and I'm like, "What up?" And I want to try and shove this sword right into that guy's chest. Okay, kick some ass. Oh gosh, please, please dice. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that is a 10. <laughs> okay. Uh, you uh, go and just do a straight thrust, um, mm-hmm. dealing uh, three harm. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it 
it definitely is uh, affecting him and it's you almost see him trying to repulse as he reaches down and tries to pull it out but he is still i'm leaning alive. in i'm like get it. still alive and still chanting do i get um, one of those um options would you roll a 10 yeah yes you either can inflict an extra harm yes. move it where you want them give a plus one to a forward take one less harm oh wait hang on a second is the ground like cracking like there's a crack or there's like a hole there is a crack forming kind of um like mm -hmm, when like a small gives crack? something really hard and it starts to fissure and then it's kind of leading from the door kind of up towards the pedestal and as if it's going up a wall itself except this wall is in thin air as this rift uh is beginning to form in the middle of this church yeah you know what instead of that extra harm i want to like navigate this guy on my sword and like start pushing him towards the, the rift. rift. You yeah. got it. You 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 do that, and you start to do that, moving him kind of away from the protection of the the two shadow demons that are currently um, uh, on both of them. Uh, the one does kind of turn and try to slash at you, um, dealing you two harm reduced to one. So you have one harm. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm and so cool. you have now been harmed. Cool. So I got a plus one moving forward. Perfect. Uh, Pan, it is now your turn. Pan is sort of looking towards Reese and everything that's going on. Uh huh. Did Dante incinerate, um, not Dante, V incinerated the one fully in front of me? No, V dealt a single harm to the one in front of you. Okay, so it didn't drop down or anything. It did like not that. drop, okay. it has more than one hit point. Yeah, okay. Um, so she is just going to keep slashing um, at these things, because at the moment, in her mindset, she just needs to get rid of all of them to stop this thing from happening. Okay, so uh, you're slashing the shadow demon or the cultist? The How far out of reach is... Because I had the shadow demon on me, so... Um, I would say the... I'd prioritize the cultist if I can get to them. Let's see. How how far do you think Reese can push in a span of a couple seconds? In D&D, well, &D, it's 30 feet per six seconds. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty long, too, so I feel like <laughs> my you know when I push farther, my arms are long. We'll say you can probably move half <laughs> of I'll say that nah. Reese has moved about 10 feet beyond you. Okay. So you can choose to engage a different one. I don't know whether our uh, attacks of opportunity happen, but you you will be willingly ignoring a threat behind you to hit another threat. I think she'll ignore the threat behind her to get rid of the cultist. So you got it. All right. So out. you go after the cultist. Go ahead and roll uh, to kick some ass. 12. <laughs> no, I lie. 14, because I can add two. Sorry, <laughs> carry on. Yes, I'm telling you, this is the luckiest set of dice I've ever had. <laughs> you are not allowed to use that dice anymore. <laughs> no, um, it's my only set. <laughs> <laughs> you move uh, forward towards um, this cultist. How do you want to kill it? <laughs> um, I kind of see it. So it was Reese actually pushing it back, or was it? Yeah, she's kind of like and turning it, it and pushing impaled. it towards this rift. Impaled yeah. on my sword. Yeah, I think if it's already impaled on Reese's sword at that point, if it starts to like keep talking, that's when she uses her claws to put it straight through the throat to cut up and just push it back at the last second so that both Reese and her are kind of impaled at, at the same on this creature at the same time you got it so uh as Reese kind of twists this sword ever so slightly uh getting this cultist to try and move towards the rift um uh pan leaps uh midair and just jams her her claws of the beast into this thing as it just pauses its muttering uh, mid-sentence and just kind of f gets pulled into this rift as it starts to seal up and the, the ground continues to quake as the uh, walls beginning to shake and the, the two shadow demons that had come forward um, look, at, uh, look at you both, look at Dante, look at V, uh. and kind of <laughs> and float, float off. 
Um, but you are at risk of this thing collapsing on you. Yeah, run away. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the tentacle that had started to reach through starts to shimmer and shake as it's being pulled back um, into whatever um, hell plane it has been summoned from. I had it set that you had five rounds to defeat all the corpses. You were on four. Ooh. I knew it was getting close. I was like, I don't have time to deal with these shadow demons. I gotta go over them. I'm like, I'm a little sad about it. I was like, damn, that would have been a really good finale. Um, cool. You make it, uh, it's fine. I can figure out something else. Um, you go uh, exit the this chapel as almost it starts to cave in on itself as if it's being it, it itself is being pulled through the rift um and you uh v who has that sight who can see even the invisible sees even more you start to see what did we call them the corruption pimples yeah um, start to kind of being sucked down and back towards as closing this rift and halting this is almost cleansed a little bit of 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 the the corruption here as it sucks into this rift and sh- pops out as this chapel just completely implodes in on itself Ooh. clear the breakout <laughs> nothing like yeah. some acne cream <laughs> yes yeah. yeah, so Dante's starting to cool off the flames are starting to reduce and you're starting to see some of his human side come back but but there's definitely like a 10 foot diameter circle around you of just cleared out snow oh yeah it's melted off he's <laughs> it's very it, warm y'all are sweating you think you'd be cold but you're sweating yeah it's it's yeah he's he's super toasty he uh v's seen this before so she keeps uh an extra set of clothes in her bag for him if she doesn't mind because <laughs> he burns all that off when he goes that <laughs> So he's kind of tucked behind a tree Rose right now. Bag in him. Yeah, he's like, um, v, um, behind a tree. Take it. <laughs> please, please, if you can, my extra clothing, please. She'll like throw oh, it. Are you naked? <laughs> it, yeah, it, yeah, it all it all burns off when he That's goes. That's right, like that. because so it all burns off parish too. <laughs> yeah, so he's 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 literally tucked behind a tree, poking out like, um, uh, excuse me, please. <laughs> be a real like asshole she was just like yeah i'm talking to someone wait a second you know listen <laughs> but listen, it's cold it's cold yeah, but it's, no, I'm, not, I'm not on fire anymore <laughs> she'll give him she'll throw the pack at him and you know probably go and does it uh are one of those like scars over the ground like i saw in the other town from the previous corruption you um where you saw scars in the in silver hollow um you saw kind of veins here mm-hmm. where it, what corruption was there had been burned away but what was here was still thriving you do start to see patches of it begin to scar um but some of it still remains as there's still there's still a corruption in this town though some of it has healed okay so there's still like i can tell that from this there's still like more that needs to be eradicated before it's good to go there, there, there's many, many, many a year, many, yeah. many a year. Many, there's a long history of bad shit that has happened here, and though this, um, this happening definitely healed some of it, releasing some of, uh, of, of good and pure energy back into it. There might still need to be more done in the future. Okay, she'll, you know, tell the rest of the group that. Um, you know, might be their problem, not hers necessarily, but she'll at least let them know. Yeah. And as uh, Dante dons some clothing, and you all kind of try to take in stock of, of what happened, you kind of hear from the distance a... Uh... As around the corner walks out Marius, a safe enough distance away from you. Slowly pick up my mop stick. (laughs) (laughs) So, you are like a cancer that I just can't cut out. Just keep growing back. You could just die, and then (laughs) that would not be a problem. Where's the fun in that, though? You may have foiled my plans on 
one or two occasions. But this is... And he just kind of goes, one or two occasions. This is yeah. not <laughs> sassy. sassy. Yeah. This isn't over. I will. I will win. And this world will be as corrupt as I know you both can be. And I'd like to howl at him, please. And he just goes, oh, down, puppy. I'd like to charge him with my sword. <laughs> he's already he's already gone. Yeah, that I figured. Yeah, V would once he disappears, or whatever she'd like blow a raspberry at him. <laughs> Dante comes running out from behind the tree, dressed, and goes, "Did I miss him? <laughs> Still here? Uh, you just missed him. Uh, missed him. Oh, damn. We all Might missed have seen him. him. We all missed him. Aim will get better, I'm sure." I'm just really excited because you all have been rolling like hot, hot, which means that it's going to be awful. next week is going to be an utter slaughter. You're just going to give us disadvantage on every single yeah. roll, aren't you? I think I have like five left. Scrat will have to give me the number. I can't really count them. Um, and as you kind of take in, take in the, uh, the cold as it creeps in and the understanding that you did halt something big here tonight but you don't know what else marius has up his sleeve that you don't know about you hop into your van your a-team van begin your long journey back towards silver hollow were there any last conversations you would like to have before we end tonight's session I have a quick question um when you said marius like pff, did he like teleport did he dissolve like what did he just disappear what, Was what it like, the way the way i tried to turn down and you watch him walk away um as the way i like to describe it is that he is phasing in and out of this reality okay cool. so he kind of he kind of shimmers in as if mm. he's walking through a veil of his mm -hmm. own between mm -hmm. a plane that you may or may not have access to Mm -hmm. and fades back into that plane and travels someplace else. Okay. Good to know for when we fight him. You got it. Um, yeah, on the way back, I'm just going to be like, thanks for having our backs back there. You're both pretty cool, but not uh, hot, but you're not hot. But, you know, I'm getting better at making friends. Hi, my name's Reese. Look at that. It's been a pleasure working with you. You are both very, very capable. Yeah, that was pretty cool, I guess. Um, no. Hi, you did race. so good. You are you are just... I mean, you know... He's, he's so proud. <laughs> you know, just... You know, I guess the training's been paying off or whatever. Well, at least you didn't electrocute me this time, so... Yeah. <laughs> you guys should see that. It's pretty funny. You could do it now. Okay. I mean, I, 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 I'd like to sit on something in the van that's not metal, though. Please. <laughs> <laughs> There's rubber matting in the van. Mm -hmm. I, I think um, Pan has sort of gone back into her human form now. She looks very like hair is all askew one side. She looks slightly like out of it, but she goes into her bag and opens a tin. And it's flapjack. I take it and I eat it. And I chew it thoughtfully and I swallow it. And I said, Jay would be proud. And she's just sort of. Of the fighting, mouthful. not so much the flapjack. <laughs> this is. This I mean, there's no pancake. I mean, there's like, no the pancake. <laughs> <laughs> Needs maple syrup. Somewhere. There's maple syrup in it. In a divine. you make them. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'll take and heat those up if you want. If they're yeah, really right. cool, you can just, just give me see that tin and I'll uh, warm that up mm, for you. Yeah, that sounds good. A walking microwave. Jay is somewhere in some divine plane, <laughs> just screaming profanities. <laughs> I was hoping you were gonna say smiling. <laughs> God damn it! Just going. What the hell are they eating? <laughs> Who's feeding That's you delight. all? Delight, an English delight. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I love it. 
You travel back towards Silver Hollow, contemplating what possibly could be coming towards you in the future. Two new al allies badass them with uh, thoughts of old old friends. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. God, I was one away from having a really, really crazy ass monster next week. <laughs> well, now you know. Disadvantages like, all around. I yeah. feel like Cabin in the Woods where that guy was like, he had the conch in his hands. <laughs> <laughs> You're never going to get to see a mermaid. <laughs> never gonna, it's never going to happen. Um, well, thank you, blast. everyone. Uh, we're going to go around and give uh, outros and I believe uh, Alice take it away yes absolutely let's uh head round um let us know where we can find you on the internet what you do um and what your favorite bit was and we will start going reverse apart from me um with dj oh cool um i'll start with my favorite bit uh i mean game wise the fight was great but i i just really enjoyed playing with everyone y'all are really a fun group to play with so thank you for having me on that uh and uh, yeah, you can find me, like I said, uh, at T-J-R-O-T-E-L-L, -L, all over the internet. Um, I'm on a d and show called Fracture Roll on Wednesday nights. And if you want to check out any other content I've made, uh, please go check out Relics and Rarities. Um, love that show. Made that when I was at Geek and Sundry. Deb Randwell's The Bomb and uh, Denise Pantoja, who's been a guest on the channel before, uh, helped produce that with me. So uh, yeah, go, go please check that out. Give that some love. And uh, yeah, just thank you. Thank you all again for having me. Super fun group. Thank you, I had a blast. Awesome, thank you. Then we're gonna hop over and say hi to Shelby. Oh, hi. Hi there. Um, my favorite parts were anything with our mop, you know. Um, <laughs> it was very solid and great to see that uh, carried throughout the episode. Um, I'm pretty new in the community. You can find me mainly on Twitter, occasionally on Twitch at Shelby is a nerd in both places. Uh, and thanks for having me. This was so much fun. I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, then we're going to hop up and say uh, hello to Lily. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. Yeah, that was my face hurts from laughing. So, you know, it was <laughs> right? a good game. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a blast. My favorite part, I, I mean, I just I still don't understand what Dante and V's relationship is because we didn't get to dig too deep on it. But it was just some real sweet moments between between those characters and I appreciate um, and you know just shout out to um, oh my gosh my name Arlo Arlo message you on Twitter <laughs> slide into those DMs <laughs> yeah slide into those DMs be like what's up demon buddy uh, yeah so good game good game my name is Lily Sparks you can find me on Instagram and Twitter and Twitch at Lily Sparks with an X I am here a lot I basically follow Alice around and play games in the same places that she does because <laughs> I'm kind of obsessed uh, which is nice that this game brought us together we do that so yeah catch me DMing on Sundays catch me doing and all kinds of stuff and yeah i'll be around have a good one <laughs> i love it thank you um then we're gonna hop over to our lovely alpha well hey everyone i'm kai gasson you can find me on the twitter sphere and instagram fear sphere at uh crit charisma um i uh live only here uh until they evict me We'll see how many puns that takes for that to happen. Um, I live with Scrat. You're fine on the puns. <laughs> Scrat and I get along like a burning house. Um, my favorite part every week is to see what you all do um, in this story setting. Uh, I really enjoyed having a Hellhound and talking with uh, TJ about it, especially since big Teen Wolf fan. I was like, listen, you want to be a werewolf? How about a Hellhound? Um, yes yes that please yeah and seeing uh seeing that dynamic but um obviously every week pan and reese stink and kill me with their shenanigans um i just never know what's gonna happen uh i thought when pancakes went away it was gonna be a little mild it's just gotten way worse they made me pay for everything remember um, I, when you told me that you wanted this game to be a little a more serious, serious? like <laughs> dark Gritty, gritty serious game emotional I mean, like, game and then hey. i got you both and i was like you know what 
just embrace it. Just embrace it. And every week, for embracing you know, us. It, my serotonin levels just go up exponentially every week. With the my cheeks hurt. I can never. I have to lay down for like an hour after this. Um, but uh, thank you everybody for coming by, and we'll end it out with the amazing white rabbit pig, Alice. Oh hi! Um, I want to say first of all, my favorite bits one are, as Kai said, the shenanigans every week. Two, how our alpha deals with it <laughs> like it's like yeah you can do that i sure. guess um, <laughs> this is the second episode i've gained a mop um <laughs> last time reese wasn't here <laughs> so, um this is my second mop i also love both how how badass dante um v are and kind of how it's almost a, a reflection of Pan and Reese accidentally where it's the along with the with the with the teenagers <laughs> that <are> yeah. like, <laughs> constantly so I love what you both did with those characters it's freaking awesome um but yes I'm white rabbit pick that's where you can find me on Twitter and Instagram I think that's it um and as lily says she follows me around i follow lily around so um could you uh please go check out uh we both dm over on gilding light um and we play together over on tales from the grim as well um into uh homebrew worlds i've created using the cypher system um blah, 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 blah. also um, i'm a photographer you can check out all of those links over there but otherwise um, i want to say a huge huge thank you to our wonderful sponsors who we couldn't be here without um so they are awesome and wonderful a thank you to uh Maycham press you can find their dark matter in hardback now i always rage about dark matter because it's one of my favorite settings dnd in space is something everyone needs in their life um you can uh, catch their fey folio um every wednesday um we also have a sponsor in the deck of many with the deck of many things the moving magic spell cards their kickstarter is taken off i am so desperate to get my hands on their moving uh tarot cards so i can use them in all of my games um also if you want to check out hero forge Tomorrow, Wednesday, every Wednesday, 2 p.m. EDT, Scrat and I drink a lot of coffee and play around with beta. Um, their beta with all the new... They add stuff almost every week with the new models, the new ways to customize it, the textures, the colors. There's some really awesome stuff. Um, also, the wonderful Dungeon Fog, whether it's for a one-shot, whether it's for a campaign, they help you build your map and keep all of your notes together with it. If you alter something on your map, it automatically updates in the notes, so it keeps everything together for you. And last but certainly not least, also our new sponsor, Heartbeat Dice, uh, which is very appropriate for Pride. So happy Pride, everyone. Please go check out their dice and also their Kickstarter, because they have some amazing shinies over there right now, um, and they're really, really gorgeous. Um, so please go check that out. Also, if you want to get into a game, and have some chaotic fun with all of us, um, please head over to Twitter and drop Scrat a DM and we will uh, get um, you into a game as we are planning next season. So it's a little chaotic right now, but you'll be on the list. Um, also, uh, if you've missed anything and want to catch up, you can head over to YouTube. Everything is on playlists over there and we'd love to hear what you think. So please come and join the Discord. It's my favorite, uh, very kind community. Um, so, and we'd love to have you come and join us. Say Otherwise, hi, I'm doing a good job. I need validation. <laughs> Very insecure. Um, come and validate hi, Kaya. <laughs> come and validate Kaya on the Discord. Um, so, <laughs> otherwise, ready for the finale next week. Keep evoking emotions, and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.